that it's missing otherwise. Like it's just card advantage in some way. Ooh, we're playing against the Yoshi Wada. They're usually DNT. They're usually white. Yeah, mono white DNT. So good that we're on the play. It's probably mm -hmm. oh, an okay hand. I mean, it's definitely a good hand. We just need a threat. Yeah, we need a threat. And this probably... is a matchup where a Forager is quite good in game one and then post board it becomes kind of awkward for yeah, obvious reasons. Since we, already, since we already have the removal spells in hand, probably lead on Volk, so that next yeah. turn you can like waste plus Volt or mm -hmm. something, or waste plus whatever. I think I have to cast this Ponder turn one every time. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely have to do that since we're, we are left without, uh, since we have no threat. This is a matchup where if I had True Name in my deck, I would be pretty happy, but I don't. True. Trying would be nice. Okay, so uh, the thing is, Wasteland is obviously not the greatest card in this matchup, as is Hex Drinker, but it's a threat still. I don't know if I would keep it. I'd lean towards yes, but maybe it's. So uh, I think you have to. It's like not ideal, but. The thing is also that because we started off with Mulk and exactly found our only two one mana green spells, <laughs> it's kind of awkward now, but that's just random. So yeah, yeah. I would definitely keep it, I think. Yeah. Um, it's just not ideal, but it's it's good enough. Yeah, it's, and, it's definitely you know, it's, borderline. Who knows? Wasteland might be might end up being good. I mean, that makes it better for us. Actually, it makes it a lot better for us because yeah, now we just play extra, guard. and then we can reassess with brainstorm next turn. We might get into a game where we waste them out. Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it might happen. It's not that likely, but it's possible. Okay, there's the planes. There's the mother. I have to kill that on site. So the thing is, I would not spend mana on the Hexdrinker this turn, I think, actually. I would I would use the Brainstorm. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I would have played it before we played the land, but oh, sure. probably, it's probably the same. So we don't need the Volk, I think, at the second Wasteland. Is my instinct, but I I don't know like yeah. if there's like an argument keeping a sec. I'd rather have my mana than the mm -hmm. second wasteland. I agree with that. Then so I now, question: Do you use forked or lightning? I think um, you're supposed to use forked bolt. I think so too, actually. Yeah. But the the other reason to do that is it's the lightning bolts have better utility at killing your opponent, which happens a lot more yeah, than people might think. There's also just uh, simply like. Situations where you need the instant speed soon. Like waiting for the ideal scenario with Fork Bolt is just graffiti. I think. Probably. Okay, well, that's. If they waste us here again, we don't really care. <laughs> I mean... Okay, good. Well, that forces us to fetch Mulk again, I guess, but that's it's fine. fine. Can finally use mana into our threat. Uh, dump mana into our threat, and then like so. Next turn, they are kind of forced to have a plow, or I don't know. I think plow is the only answer because they are since they wasted, they can't cast apparition now. Well, apparition will be a <sighs> Okay, so they are plowing. Well, that's sad. But they're out so of they're lands. Draw, oh, they don't have a land. And okay. We have a goy, so let's. Get down to business. I Do guess. I play my strand or waste? So the thing is, we don't have a fourth book in the deck, so this is our last one. Um, I'm not entirely sure, actually. I think I should play waste and weave up the Volk, actually. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I'm not entirely sure about this. I don't think it matters too much anyway. Yeah. But... There's like arguments for and against it. Like you could say brainstorm and you could say hmm. not showing the wasteland. All right. Well, okay, well, I guess I can untap. Mana's not like. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, it's fine though. Well, yeah. we're definitely going to leave up force on engagement. For well, well, yeah. I mean, well, I, I don't have anything else to do. So. Yeah, I'm just saying like. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> they have three Mother of Rin's dead. 
Well, yeah, with Gunner. I cannot counter it fast good. enough because it's the most convenient turn to do it as well. Yep. Their draw, I mean, it's it was pretty good so far, but they're all stuck on one land. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that's just counterspell in this situation most of the time. Let's see. Okay, that's 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 kind of nice. Yeah, I would bounce. Oh, bounce! I would, actually, I would actually bounce the the Volk. Yeah. Oh, actually, you could also. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, Volk is better. you're definitely. I was gonna say drop because of brainstorm, actually, but it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. So it's probably better to take the Volk. Oh. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think they're dead. Yeah. You waste your attack. You play forager. Uh, I, I think you attack first because yeah. you might want to put the sorceries in. I, I don't know if you even want to do it. Maybe, maybe you just you leave exactly one sorcery in your graveyard. Probably. Well, if I get to but attack you, with this, they die to lightning bolt. So I shouldn't even play the volcanic out. I think. Yeah, I would not play the volcanic. Yeah. Yes. I would just take lightning bolt, lightning bolt, ponder, and brainstorm. Yeah. I, I don't I'm think it really matters sword. because if I get to attack with this, they're 100 percent dead because they're at three. Yeah, as well, yeah so. I'm just saying like I would not excel oh. both sorceries. Oh man, we free rolled that one. I feel like. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, guess they draw, tried to waste us out. So I, I don't think their draw was bad or anything. They had a lot of cheap spells. It just played out this way. Yeah, force negation is really bad. I actually like Madros against the DNT. I would not sideboard that. I don't know. Okay. Well, so I want to hedge for rest in peace is the problem. So Yeah, that's true. But like, the thing is, Madros is still better than Goyf against rest in peace, like in case you get to six. And on the other side, uh, Madros can't get can't be Skycliff apparition. Um, so maybe like yeah. this then. Um, I could get behind that. Oh, do I want the loam? Thinking right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Loam is awkward against DNT. Sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's really bad. Like, it depends. We are also on the draw, like against Athalia. I don't know if I want loam in my hand. But on the other hand, is loam maybe better than Sylvan Library? Or I don't know. But Sylvan Library is a threat, kind of, like against Rest in Peace. So they definitely have at least rest two resting pieces. Right. In their deck. So to answer the question about delve threats versus rip, is if you get to six lands, you can start casting them. Whereas Tarmogoyf is literally zero one versus rip, is is the answer. Yeah, like it's obviously very marginal because you rarely get to the six mana, but it's like depending on like the situation, ha being able to hard cast it or like cast it before the resting piece, versus having a chump blocker that essentially does nothing else. I mean, I also think like just the CMC uh, uh, reason, like the the CMC against Skycliff Apparition is just uh, a reason for me to like not side out delve threats against the, the usually. I might take out like, one more Tarmogoy for the loam, but I'm not sure. Um, I mean, we have six, nine, eleven threats without Tarmogoy. It, I think it's kind of a wash. I don't know. You can you can do what you want here. I, think. Oh. I, I, I don't I don't really know. Like the thing is, like I like low more on the play against DNT. Okay. But to to answer a question, I really don't like Clothis in this matchup. Yeah, I don't think that card is good. So the the, the thing is, Clothis is a card that does nothing on the board. Like it can't attack or block. So you, when you cast that that card, the problem is you go down a card when you resolve it until mm -hmm. your opponent is so low that they have to chump block things or until your opponent dies to it so it's essentially like discarding a card which can be really good if like your opponent can never deal with it but dnt can deal with it they have a lot of skycliff operations so also rest in peace is really good against quote this yeah for, for all this so that, that's yeah. why i would never like sideboard that in this matchup also they don't have that many cards in their graveyard like generally yeah would rather get this wasted, I think, as well. Yeah, I agree. I uh, definitely do not side out Wasteland in this matchup. That, I think, is a big error. I actually side out Wasteland a lot less often than other people do. Um, yeah, the thing with Wasteland in this matchup is, like, they have Thalia. 
and it pays for Thalia. <laughs> so that, that's my <laughs> my simple argument for keeping it. The other thing is wasting their wastelands and ports and crocuses comes up a lot. And occasionally they just have an awkward hand where they get wasted out as well. The, I think there's a lot yeah, of reasons it, it not to. It really matters, out. like, because mm -hmm. sometimes one of the deal breakers for the matchup is days, as you can see here. Um, and because of that, sometimes just wasting them for one turn so that your days is active for one more turn is really relevant as well. Um, not that I really wanted to see here, but. Uh, yeah, I would probably play the fetch. That's yeah, like... this sucks. This kind of sucks, yeah. It kind of, <clears throat> it is weird that they did run out the Skyclave. It makes me think they have another one. Yeah, that would be okay, though. I don't I don't think Skyclave is what we lose here, too. How about that? That's the card I was afraid of. Mm. Well, um... I guess we have outs to that. Yeah. Some at least, but not not that many. Alright, I think I have to cast Preordain off of Volk. Yes, yeah, I think so too, yeah. Yeah. Try fetch first. I would probably so the thing is what what are you going to? Well, if you find Brainstorm, it's really bad if you didn't fetch first, right? Like, if you find mm -hmm. Brainstorm, you... And then there's, like, cards on top that you want to draw. Or, like, if you find any one mana spell... Every, actually, I would just fetch drop and Yeah, I would, I would definitely fetch first, I think. Okay, I can fetch first. once, but I don't have to fetch twice. I no, think. no, never twice. Never yeah. twice. Just, just once. And, like, you cast it off the... Yeah, off the drop. Yeah. It's better. Can't get Spirit of the Labyrinth. That's actually well. The thing is, so Banner Skull hits for four. Yeah. So we we like we take four and they take take two every turn if we go for this route, I guess. I think that's I know, too I slow. I think that'll end up with me losing eventually. I also don't think the Blazing Volley is gonna do yeah. much necessarily. So I think I'm just so. gonna bottom both and yeah. look for Brazen Borrower or Wilt. Eight, fifteen, nine, yeah. Yeah, I think I think you just bought them both. Well that's fine. So we still have a drop in our deck, which yeah. means worst case scenario we end up casting Mandros this turn. Um should probably fetch should we fetch first actually? Because now we bought them two bad cards. It's it's a wash actually, because like if you fetch now and like there's one bad card less in your deck. If you pre-order them before fetching, there's two bad cards. It's like, yeah. I, I think you are fetch. supposed to actually fetch first. And the reason yeah, yeah, is, yeah. it you get even if you see the bad cards again, you get to bottom them again. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree, I agree. So, I uh, we don't want these, I yeah. think, at all. Well, <laughs> we... I think I still have to play the uh, yeah, yeah. Mandrills. And I have to do it pre-combat uh, because of the Rashad port. Well, they would never port here, but... Yeah, they could. Yeah. I mean, they have better spell in it. Like, why would they not pour? Why would they pour here? <laughs> it's like crazy. So, Jax, the reason is I'm going to have to end up fetching anyways to cast the mandrels. So, if you're if you're locked into that, you should fetch first so you can re bottom bad cards if you see them, because you're always so fetching. The, you're always fetching this turn. Yeah, the thing, the thing. Yeah, I would always fetch first there. Just because it's preordained. Like, if I weren't going to, f if I didn't need to fetch, then maybe it's good to do that. I agree. I was... Yeah, that's, that's like the main reason. Well, it sucks. Whatever. I, I kind of want them to skyclave go over here, but they are probably not going to do that. They know about this, right? Oh, yeah, they know about it. And about my bad, that was. Well, that wasn't the great draw. So is it worth casting that even or not? I think I'm supposed to attack. You yeah, definitely attack. Probably. Attack. Maybe play... attack first. And yeah, attack. Play. See what they do. They're not going to violin anything, I, I predict. 
And then yeah, I just hope. cast this and play the Delver and hope something good happens. Yeah, and you hope, like, you draw a Brainstorm or whatever. Brainstorm or Wilt. Wilt would still be pretty decent. Okay, I don't know what... It's Flicker Wisp, right? Oh, yeah. Well... God, that's so good. We are probably, probably super dead. Yeah. Yeah. Still playing Daryl at Delver, but yeah. Well. Because now I think they're just going to get Sophie, and I'm basically dead to that. Yeah, I think we are. Yeah. Dead. Yeah, no, the Flicker Wisp was ideal for them. I mean, obviously. I don't think this game is really winnable unless I mulligan my hand, but I don't think you're allowed to mulligan that hand either. I don't think you're mul uh, allowed to mulligan in this. There were days and days commanders on a draw because the only thing, like, I mean, obviously it's soft to Lyle, but they have a lot of, like, we even days to Skyclip. Wait, though. no. Wait, I'm just dead. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I guess I'll see what they do. It. I would take yeah. it, but yeah, I think you're dead. <laughs> It's gonna be really hard. Kind of surprised they didn't put on the germ. Well, I think the reason for that is in case you destroy Battle Skull, that they don't have to spend five mana. Well, we survive one more turn with that, I guess. Unless yeah. they have like anything. <laughs> I mean, they're supposed to cast it, I guess. And then, like, I don't know what whatever say was there. I think we have to like brainstorm into land, land, or land borrower, borrower, or something combination like that. It has to be very yeah, lucky. Something crazy. And I think I'm. It's not even allowed to be a fetch land because the flickerisp can shoot me down to one. Yep. Okay. Well, or they did that instead. They found the line. It's it's still fine because like we didn't know about the fifth land. Like there's nothing we could have done. On the play for game three, I guess. Did we see anything? No, there's like it's like only stock no. D and T cards, I think. I mean they didn't play a rip, but it is it is almost a lock that they have in their deck, so Yeah, they they always have I mean this is this is better than it used to be in the matchup, but I think it's still kinda of bad. And the question is like which which of your cards is like worse than force of negation here? Like really? Especially on the play, the dazes now get better. Forcing too mo too often is also not that great. Try loam. Yeah, maybe it's better than the goif on the play, but kind of like I kind of like goif more on the play to just try to get under them. Maybe just loam isn't for this matchup in this in this in this configuration. I miss my soul for elementals. <laughs> I usually play that card. It just didn't today because I didn't expect that much DNT. So yeah, um, I would not have played it uh, right now. Anyway. I think I'm just going to leave it alone and just submit this. Yeah, I think we're fine. Yeah, our opponent plays the most vanilla list. Nothing wrong with vanilla. No, I like I like good DNT lists. They don't have Yorion or stuff like that. <laughs> All right. Nice. I think I like the hand. I do too. It's a trop delver, I think. Yeah. The thing is, if they play Vile, I think you are just going to destroy it instead of dazing. Agreed. Yeah, that's fine, I think. Because dazing just, like, you, gen you just lose to Thalia if you daze there. Agreed. And to Stoneforge Mystic, probably even. Ooh, that's pretty bolt. good. That's yeah. pretty damn good, yeah. It's like how you want it to be. I cast my natural eyes. Yeah, powerful. <laughs> how many times have you cycled this in this deck? I guess it happens. In this but... deck, I like even in the Euro version, I have like only cycled it once or twice and at max. This deck doesn't Ooh, this is interesting. 
All right, so my oh, instinct hi. is I actually have to daze it, but if I had, if I knew I was going to draw a blazing ball, you're roughed on by Yeah, so then it would. Yeah, but yeah. I think so it's daze. I can uh, bouncing. Which one? So in case you draw waste, then you could bounce the drop, but you can also bounce the Volk in case you want to cast preordain. I think it's more likely that you're going to cast preordain, so I would bounce the Volk. Right. You know, like Fair before enough. you before you decide to uh -huh. cast Volk or not. I think it's probably better. Okay. Mandras is quite nice. This is awkward now because well, hmm. so we have two we have two uh, two lines I guess two like mm -hmm. macro lines. One is you still bolt the mother, which I would probably prefer. The yeah. other is you go you hit them to thirty and cast the mandras and just try to ignore the mother. That's I like don't, both yeah. are. Both are tempting to me, but I would probably still do the like, you know, conservative line. I, 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 I'd so, want yeah. both of those cards. I, I'd still want both of those cards because yeah. Mandras is still decent against against Mother of Ruins because of the Trample. Like if if it didn't have Trample, I think we might actually just bottom it, or I don't know. Well, yeah, no like, one plays six it, mana it, four four delve. Ah, <laughs> uh, all right. I add them to G. Okay, I guess. Well, that's fine. That's fine. We drew. They traded with one of our cards in hand. In in uh, the scenario. I think I should I fetch think first. You might want to fetch first yeah. here. Yeah. Again, like the only card that punishes you for fetching first here is brainstorm. Anything else is like it's just worse if you don't fetch first because you have the second fetch run anyway. Probably getting. I would get Volk actually, because you have so much more red spells in your deck. That's fair. Like yeah. because Goyf is not not a, not really a spell anymore at this point. Um, actually, I would draw the days. I think because yeah. like they missed land drop. They're sitting on the canopy for like two turns already. It's very likely that we get to days their next play. And you might actually want to hard cast days here. Because then we get closer to six mana. I know that sounds Great. kind of crazy, but no. if yeah. you draw brainstorm, you already yeah. have a card in hand that you want to brainstorm away. So, yeah. My best draw is like brazen borrower. I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we definitely just. Oh. Ooh. This is very tempting. Everything, but. I think waste is wasting better. I think wasting is better. I think wasting is better as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think wasting is better. So I put the force on the bottom, Delver in between. Then I yeah, can fetch away the force. Can. Yeah, on the. Still flip the Delver to it. Exactly. Yeah. I think yeah, we're I don't in like the... that. This is the most intuitive line as well. Yeah, it's it's somewhat straightforward as well. So I like it. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Really care about yeah. that. That's that's actually not great for them, I think, in a lot of ways, right? Because now yeah, they that, can't that, double plow. Yeah, that also means they don't have Stoneforge. That means they don't have. Um, yeah. They don't have plow. They would have cast plow, I think. Yeah, I think they're probably dead. I don't see it. Like, land flicker whiz was like the only thing. Ah, uh, they're hoping to block and plow that. Oh. Uh, Poor them. Yeah, they're dead. All right. Uh, sometimes it's that easy. You draw like yeah. a card that's not good, and you knew you were going to draw it, but their deck kind of just misfired that game, right? Yeah, sometimes D and does that. Like D and D is one of the most stable and also unstable mana base. It's it's kind of weird because like because D and has such a good such good mana. Mm -hmm. You are kind of inclined to keep uh, greedy hands with with low with a lot of spells because you don't want to flood, and then sometimes it bites you. Oh, and now uh, Matt Murray Chubby Rain resubbed, so that means I have to I have to see what's inside. Oh. What a well, <laughs> why does this card exist? <laughs> that card is I have seen it in casual, really like no format. 
Oh, oh I mean, sure, sure. Some people like like literal casual low format. <laughs> I've seen people play that. It's like the only time I've seen this card outside of like draft. Oh, Adam MTG asks that was easy. I think game theory was pretty easy, frankly. Like, oh, a gifted sub from Adam MTG to House of Mana. Let's get some Jarvis claps in chat for House of Mana and Adam MTG, and let's see what's in this chest. Ah, uh, this ended a lot of Momir games, but not much else. Yeah. The left card actually, uh, the, what's it called? Assault? Something? Uh, Booster Jots asks, what's the last time I opened something good in chess? I opened a Bonders ornament like a week ago, which was randomly nine tickets. If you know that card from uh, Popper or Stefan. Yeah, the, yeah, I know that card. There, there is some stupid decks with Assault Formation. Like potentially, yeah. like turn four, or turn three, killing in like pioneer or historic or uh, not historic pioneer. It's pioneer. Yeah, although pioneer now is wild. Uh, the I saw no, it, maybe it's not pioneer. No, it was. I saw emergent ultimatum lotus field. Did you see yeah, that? Pioneer is, pi yeah, pioneer is yeah. So pioneer is kind of wild. Yeah. Historic is more also, wild now, obviously, because... <laughs> there's also not a lot of innovation going into Pioneer, yeah. because um, the um, other... All the other... Like, a lot of Pioneer... People who would play Pioneer normally play Historic or Modern or whatever now. So, like, Pioneer is kind of stagnant. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to I'm find trying this. Right now. I'm trying to find the list I saw. Ah, uh, yeah. Emergent Ultimatum is a really good card in this deck, if you can cast it. I'm not sure it solves the problems I have with this deck, which are mainly, like... It's still kind of a clunky deck, I think, in a lot of ways, is my issue with it. Is the Rug Uro experiment over? I don't know, I... I've... I've not enjoyed it lately, is how I would put it. Something feels off about the Ruggero deck, and I'm not sure what. Yeah, I think it's kind of complex to fit Ruggero yeah, into exactly. it's, it's not It's not trivial. You can't just throw in throw it in like Oko or mm -hmm. something like that. Is this Ben Breslow? Um, I don't know, like, the... It, this deck, the I think the major issue is it it is actually slower than like mono red on average or like Winota. Which Isn't is this also just slower than normal Lotus Field combo. Like I'm not sure because you have like maybe it's not slower actually. But... Dark petition. You don't have oh. morale. Is this just Opus? Yeah, it was. Oh. By this this username I recognize, I know they play a lot. Four three with Pioneer Opus. Well I wonder if this card was bugged at the time. It probably was, right? <laughs> oh yeah, if you click on MTGO uh, for the prices prizes. I mean the um when, uh, where it says tabletop arena MTGO. Like yeah. for the price for the deck. Oh yeah. You can just because then you see Oh yeah, it, it it collapsed, I think it looks like, right? Yeah, it's it's still a lot though. Eighteen. It's still much more than it should be, I think. But <laughs> whatever. This card's so sweet. It's it's just this like this card is kind of. I've thought of like th this could be pay playable in a lot of formats. Not like in modern. We, in modern, we don't have um, what's it called, Mystic's Mastery. Yeah. Because uh, that was, would be like the <laughs> right. only thing that made it would make it playable in modern. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I don't know. But it's definitely Pioneer Historic Standard playable. I don't know. I don't know about Standard actually, because you don't have to enable us. I'm still um did, did were there other chain of smog decks you've seen lately that did well? Um not really. Yeah. I guess Mad Vogue 5 0 with a depths version. Did he? I didn't see that. Let me find Maybe it. four one. I think he five o uh it's on his Twitter. Okay, let me find that. Um, someone tried it in Vintage with Workshops. 
Oh, what? Sorry. Uh, what did they try and vintage with workshops? Why? <laughs> like, I'm not getting something here. I'm pretty sure. Chain of small combo now. Oh, okay, they won more with oh, depths. He won more with so, depths than the smog combo, which tracks for me. Yeah, yeah, he said that. Workshop to cast Gear Hulk. That's kind of wow. That is some vintage level thinking. You're like this is an artifact that costs three or more. All right, let's try it with Mitra's Workshop. Uh, are you are you sure that that someone isn't you, Chubby Ray? <laughs> it probably is. I saw so many screenshots of uh, Ska. You know what Ska is? Um, it's the three in a red two two uh, magecraft make a treasure. Oh, that one, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, see, wow. Matt knows he's skying right now, and the reason it's called sky is because sky is also a type of music. <laughs> Hester I died for ever since. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I've seen that version. I didn't share it here. This is the Mo Panda list. I think we talked yeah. about it. I also think Wait, I what? tried that yesterday on stream. Yeah, that's... Wait, this is a different or... deck. I'm confused. No, no, there's multiple decks in this tweet, I think. there's a There there are like three decks in this tweet. This is the one that gives attacking creatures double strike. I'm not convinced that that's... Yes. Playable. Uh, is it in Red Stompy, I guess? Yes, yeah. Uh, I don't think I that's... Don't really, I don't really see it as well, but maybe I'm missing, missing something. There's also Torbrand, I don't know why. I like, I actually like the addition of Sedmorge Witch, and let me explain why. I think if you Chain of Smog plus Sedmorge Witch, that actually is good enough, even if you only get a few tokens out of the deal. Um, yeah, because, like, your opponent needs you to, like, get Hellbent, and by that right. point, you still have, you already have, like, three or four yep. on ones. So, like, also, one thing that is important about this card, it has Menace, so it, like, doesn't get blocked. <laughs> To death that easily by Ice Fang or Snapcaster or stuff like that. The other thing is, if you're at three life and you try to target it with anything but Abrupt Decay, you'll be sad. That's true. I don't know. Like, Ward paid three all... life is so, like, I don't love it as, like, a design space, but. I don't think it's that good necessarily. So. Yeah, but it's just infuriating. It... Like, you know what I mean? It's just like you have to pay three every time you target it. Also, I think yeah. it's bugged the same way Chancellor of the Annex is bugged on Moto. Like, if you target it, you don't get a window to respawn or something. Like, in, if you know, like, the Reality Smasher. Oh, Chancellor of the so what you're saying is if you, um, if you target it and you want to, like, respond with Weather the Storm, you might not be able to. For example, that would be yeah. a situation where it, where it would make a difference like usually it doesn't make a difference but i'm just saying like you, you mm -hmm. I, I, from what i saw you couldn't respond yeah but, but whether um, the storm is the the card i would i think of that would make that relevant you know yeah i think it's much more relevant in the case of chancellor <laughs> because of fetch lands so um one thing also is um that i want well, that i want to say is um when I played uh, Limited against Sedgemore Witch, I funnily very often didn't have to pay the three because two of the red removal spells are uncounterable. <laughs> yeah, he did like, debate, and what's the other one? Debate and Ur Urza's Rage. Oh, but that one is like, that's a rare. That's a fake rare, anyways. Yeah, but I guess oh, yeah, that's but funny. there's like some uncounterable spells. It's like. <laughs> So, like, I never yeah. had to pay to free life when I play against Obviously, it. Abrupt Decay is the best possible versus these types of things. Yeah, it doesn't that's care. true. Um, anyways, I, I will like a lot about this list. I might try it at some point. I think it makes more sense than what I was trying before in a lot of ways. I'm not sure about Tamiyo, but that's... Uh, yeah, well, it, it fuels Spurrow, in a sense. That's, yeah. like, I guess, one of the reasons. And then, like, it finds combo pieces or buys back stuff. Like... People have played Snapcaster Mage in this spot. Not sure, like, which one is better, or, like, if any of those actually needs to be played. But, I mean, Tamiya is not, like, completely terrible. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I suspect it to be, like, terrible against Delver, like Tamiya. But, like, against combo or, like, slower decks, it's probably very reasonable. 
but like I'm not a huge fan. Oh, there's a tour brand as well. What the hell? I didn't yeah, even. I, I, I don't oh. really know what this list is. They're really about. trying to polymorph into some big hitters, aren't they? Off their Firefox squad. Yeah, they want but, like they want to OTK or something. But that's not what this deck specializes in. Like you're shaving lock pieces to do this. If you just play a lock piece plus your threats, it doesn't really matter what they are. Yeah. Is it like like most of these have four Trinity Sphere, right? Or like is that yeah. the standard that's yeah. on F three? Yeah, I don't like that then. So like cut cut of like like this is the cards you mulligan tour the cards you mulligan towards are not the rebel masters like i guess sometimes sometimes turn one rebel master does it i'm gonna go on a rant i think it's really weird that these decks don't play one gemstone caverns as like a fifth um, chrome box that's interesting yeah i guess I've thought yeah, that forever. I would probably, if I'd run Gemstone Caverns, I would probably definitely shave on all those double red cards that this person put in. Because like sometimes you might draw it and mm -hmm. you want definitely wanted to make um relevant mana. Whoa, hold on, I just noticed there's a lot of weird things going on about this deck. There's Raven's Crime to empty your opponent's hand to make the clear it out. Yeah. This is like much a... more of a mid range. Yeah, there's no proper tech. There are no crop, crop rotations. It has a... No, the mana base is still not good, actually. I was about to say it has a better <laughs> mana base, and I realized it's not actually better. It's, like, almost the same mana base. Plus yeah. cycle lands, which make it worse. Like, it's not pro it's probably not worse. Because you don't have to cast Hex Mage, but... Still. True, but you, you're, you need black and green early. I think Fourth Bayou would be good. Oh, there's only three depths, so that sort of makes... Wait, there's three depths, four stage... I guess that makes sense. You want to cast your spells, but this is not good at casting all of the black-green cards. That's true. I well, know. I mean, this deck is basically a once-upon-a-time abuser deck, is what, I, yep. what I'm seeing. Because this actually, mm -hmm. like, compared to other depths lists... Like, in depths, obviously, once-upon-a-time is good as well, but here you're like... You have like one part of a combo, and then you can find the other one with once upon a time. I guess you can also really find Chain of Smog, but you can. Oh. You have eight, like you have Graves Crown as well. We we have eight. another match apparently. I was informed by the bot. Oh, okay. It's fine. Uh, I would keep that. Yeah, it's probably crazy to mulligan. Why would you mulligan when you could just not mulligan? I don't know. Some people like to mulligan. Jax likes to mulligan. Yep. Yeah, because right. he wants to go turn one. This person... Their last deck was black-green. Just, like, imagine Jabberwocky's deck, but in Legacy. Okay. I don't know. So they're doesn't... probably playing against Tarmogoyf, Hex Drinker. Well, there's no Hex Drinker. Only Confound Ooze, Tarmogoyf, four Lilianas in total. Yeah, yeah. I guess now I have to say it, now that I've seen it. Um, I think... I don't know if... Hmm. So we... Actually, I think we are not far from casting Forager, so I, yeah. I kind of want to like... I kind of want to keep it. I kind of want to draw the Wasteland, though. Yeah, I'm going to bottom... Put the Vulcan in the bottom and reassess. If they like waste me, then I can just draw off the cards anyways. Then you can just draw all of yeah. the cards. And then it also doesn't matter, like... I don't draw the Forager. Yeah, I should put the Waste on top then, I think. Because, like, the Forager is your most important card here. Yeah. Like, you don't want to get thoughts used. Agreed. Morgan's the best draw spell in MT Joe. IRL is too much work. Wow. Ah, so I guess I'm going to be drawing all those lands. Yeah, I mean... It doesn't really change what we are doing, so I think it's fine. I think it might actually be actively good for us that they did that. I think mm. you just let that go. Yeah. I, I guess I guess they'll, they'll take bold probably, but or brazen bore, I guess. But if they take bold, it's actually pretty bad for them because they actually might take bold here because they see we don't have a second blue, and then we get to put it under the forager, which would be insane. Told you, it's Jabberwocky deck. It feels like a Jabberwocky deck right now, right? Yeah. Wasteland, Basic that. Swamp, Inquisition. 
Uh, in Vintage, they only play Golo stacks, but that was not a good metric for this format. <laughs> nice. That's what I wanted, because now we That's have... actually great. Now we have Force Backup yeah. for it. Our... Force, force Backup plus uh, relevant cards under our guy. They have uh, two trophies and four decays, which is about normal for this style of deck. Yeah, we're, we're a snap forcing trophy, I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, you already get the card back right away, right? So it's kind yes. of a free roll. Yeah, this, this is why Dreather Arcanist was broken, because this is so much worse than Dreather Arcanist, but still makes it want you to force your opponent's removal. Like, that's mm -hmm. not good game you know, when, when you're threat. You like your play threat, you force your opponent's removal, and you just win the game with like one or two attacks. This is much more, uh, how to say. All right, so uh, a few questions in the Rumble. chat. Was there merit to not pondering on turn one? I think it's pretty crazy not to with that hand. I think you have to ponder on turn one because your only clock is Brazen Borer. That by itself usually doesn't like cut it. Like, if you think that. You are going to win with Brazen Bora in time before your opponent can like unfold their game plan. Then maybe, but I don't think you can do it in the dark or against Black Green anyway. You you definitely can't do it against Black Green, and you definitely you also should not do it in the, in the dark. You definitely need a threat. I don't know why they were tapping so slowly. They were thinking about not casting it. I think. <laughs> Okay, I would attack, cast Ponder off Mulk, hit a Goy for a Hex. Ideally, a Hex Drinker would be like the best card that we can draw here. Hex Drinker or Delver. Or Daze would also be nice. That's yeah. really good. So the thing it's... is, I think you still deploy the Delver and flip it to the Daze. It's like them, be them having the second trophy is very unlikely. I don't know what creature or card you would daze there. Uh, Liliana of the Veil. Vale. They don't have three mana next turn. We have ways. Oh, sure. Uh, I guess that makes sense. So I, I yeah. think you definitely want to like develop the threat. Because like, even if they kill the... Even if they have the second trophy, which is unlikely, then we still have Del Delver in play. I can click no, oh, right? There. Yeah. If I don't search, I don't. I'm not forced to shuffle, correct? Yeah, I think you okay. you're just saying no if that happens because you definitely want to draw stuff. Oh, yeah, I think it was made. Yeah, I guess that's fine, in a sense, because it made them play out their dual end as well. Like we already saw them having to fetch Bayou with Marsh Flat, which means which means they they can fetch Forest, and it's good for us. God, Wasteland's broken. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Hold on. Uh, so the thing is, we don't really care about it, but they might still, it might still be worth dazing. I don't know. Like, there could be Liliana next turn, obviously. So, I think I'm not so supposed to daze for that reason, actually. Yeah, I think they're also so yeah. unlikely to remove our guy, so we just right. want to go. In. I would just, I would actually play Islands and cast. Like, it's already awkward, obviously awkward for Brainstorm, but I just want to be able to cast spells. Yeah, I guess you just draw only the Brainstorm yeah. and then attack pass. So then next turn they will cast whatever we daze that. Yeah. So the the actual yeah the the actual reason not to daze that I think is I think all of the three mana planeswalkers matter way more than the Tarmogoyf in this situation, as well. Yeah. The the thing is like if you think the game would go super long, then you would daze it. But we're like trying to end the game in three mm -hmm. or four turns. Like they like if they remove our guy, then Tarmogoyf starts to matter. So, but they can't really remove it otherwise without Liliana or Trophy. So, 
think how much life are they able to gain? It's like one. Don't There's one I'm creature in the graveyard. Like it would be nice to like use the days, but still, I would I would just let yeah. this go. I think so. Yeah. They are not close to racing us anyway. Oh, it doesn't look like they have a land either. So. Yeah. Well then. So the question is, do I bolt the men's step? I think. Um. You see what I'm saying? What because if I find another bolt or fork bolt, it's lethal. It's lethal if you don't do that anyway, because you have days, right? Oh, okay, then I'm not supposed to. So, like, I don't think there is upside to doing that. That's pretty good, too, yeah. actually. I think we just attack, pass. Like, the only the only upside to instant bolting is it somewhat plays around Wasteland, but we can also play around Wasteland anyway with yeah. days. So like, we can force a little their Wasteland. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah, uh, I would. Well, yeah, that that sounds like the correct play. Yeah, you you bounce the ooze, and then you bolt them face. And now they have to decide whether to gain life or not. And if they choose to gain life, we can actually daze the Inquisition if we want to. I think it might be good to do that. Yeah. Probably. Because then they can't take Brainstorm. I think Floating Red makes more sense. I think yep. now I just cast it. Yep. Yeah, I think they're dead. I think there's nothing they can have. Slaughter Pact died to their Slaughter Pact. <laughs> oh man, that was uh, that was kind of a beautiful game for us, but obviously their deck doesn't seem correct power level for this format, sort of. I, I think their deck is supposed to be good against Delver, but we had Forger. Well, yeah, Forger is just better than their deck. Um, True. Yeah, Force of Negation seems questionable in this matchup. Even Force of Will, but no, I, the thing I th is, Force yeah. of Will, like, you can at least counter Liliana and stuff like that. But this doesn't counter creatures, which is the problem. So, let's see. They're going to have three chokes, three Veil of Summer, two Toxic Deluge, and a trophy. Okay. So maybe I do want a number of these. Actually, that, that kind of makes me want to not have these. But, <laughs> but because, like, why would I, like, I guess, I guess you could lose to choke on the draw, but that's yeah. like one thing. Um, how good is Brazen Borer? It's also a question. I think it's good because of the choke thing as well. So, well, four. Yeah, what are their threats? Do they have play Dark Confidants? They have four Confidants, four Ooze, four Tarmogoyf, three Liliana Veil, one Liliana Lasso, and a bunch of okay, removal so and like discard. Only four and a half threats, so Forks Bolt probably is bad. Yeah, I think it's bad. Because you don't, don't you, you can't always kill Scavenging Ooze with this thing. If I could, then I would exactly, probably leave it yeah. in. And you already bring in Submerge anyway. Well, Submerge yeah, is just obviously know. the nuts in this matchup. I would, I would either cut, I don't know, two forces or maybe, maybe I don't know how good Clothes is gonna be actually. I mean, like it's really hard for them to deal with it. Though. I'll set out one Clothes and maybe a Hex Drinker on the play or on the draw. Because like they might have played. Play again, Jerry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I can see that. Also, it's really clunky in the draw. Maybe I don't have time to level it all the way up. Obviously, in the longer game, I'll want it in my deck or to draw it, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it did look like a modern deck with Bayou. Bayou is a real upgrade, though, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a keep. Oh, sweet. No discard spell? Probably casting career day, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so. 
This is interesting. Is Wasteland gonna do stuff or not? So the thing is, if we get to waste them, it delays the game, but like you're kind of support, uh, you're kind of like forced to for like if they cast anything relevant on turn two, you know? I think I'm gonna bottom both, actually. Yeah, I think that's fine. I was just gonna try to explain why I think Wasteland is too high variance. Yeah, they only they have seven basic lands actually. I'm looking at this. <laughs> so maybe we like, sort of sack them out, but they do play four peatland, a treetop village, and four wasteland and three bayou. This is interesting. It's funny if because if we find a ball the we can still kill it. Because we can like mm -hmm. ponder into bolts or something. But if they decay Delver, we might have problems. I, I think I'm priced into forcing it, unfortunately. The reason is because it would have to be exactly next turn for the bolt, and Submerge is not turned on right now. So it's kind of risky to just let this resolve. Yeah, you might just die. So I think I should pitch Brainstorm, actually. Is that crazy? Yeah, I would not pitch Brainstorm. You want to I pitch? think because like you have to you have to drop in hand that you kind of want to get rid of here because like we don't have a daze yet and we don't have a fetch yet. So do you want to pitch preordain then? Preordain, yeah, okay. I agree. I like that more. I think this one's close decision. Obviously, if I draw a bolt, it's going to look stupid that I did this, but I think it's just way too risky. Yeah. Oh, pl think, plus, what if they I just have a fetch land or something? Like, I don't know. It, it just gets out of hand, right? Well, they can't play land. Oh, turn, sure, right? sure. I meant just it. It this being the only turn where I can answer with lightning bolt makes it way too hard. I think. Yeah, I think it was more about. Well, I, I would ponder first, I guess, before doing anything. Damn it! <laughs> I think well, I should shuffle actually, but. Should you? Um, yeah, I don't know how good Bolt is anyway, so... Yeah, let's shuffle. I think I'm going to shuffle, and then I'm going to play Delver off Trop, probably. Yeah. I've played off Bolt, actually, because, like, we don't have a red spell in hand anyway, and we, like... Okay. I and kind it... of don't want to have to... have to have this Tropical... I kind of want to get rid of this Tropical, basically. <laughs> Like if they if they waste bulk here, I don't think it's that bad for us. Please, no, no. Um, right, that's fine. Well, that's whatever. Well, I guess now your play was better, but <laughs> I didn't expect them to like play a two drop and waste us. But whatever, it's fine, I guess. Yeah, you definitely just attack play goy. Yeah, putting pressure on their life tool is the best way to offset Sylvan Library anyways. Unfortunately, they know about Submerge, so if they're smart, they should only fetch Swamps, but that at that point, this is doing them damage as well, so I don't know. It's like kind of weird, right? Yeah, yeah. Punished for correct play? Well, I'm not sure about it being a It, it was kind it was of close, like actually, yeah. I feel like if your opponent's deck is likely to play 2-drop into Wasteland... What? Alright, okay. Yeah. Uh, this is getting... I, I mean... Yeah. I mean, I would probably sideboard in the rest if I don't have anything better, but <laughs> it's not like taking the relevant cards, right? You know what would be insane versus this person? Day of Summer. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Day of Summer would just be straight up Cryptic Man at basically all points of the game. I'm not entirely sure if playing Volk was card. I just have the gut feeling that they would not waste us next turn, but... I don't know, people like wastelanding so much. Did we sign in the loam? Yes. We did. Alright, that means this is not long for this world. Yeah, the goid is probably... Hmm. Well. <laughs> Speaking of... Okay, so... Yeah, just attack first and see what happens. Attack first, let the goid get with whatever. And loam back my Volk, which actually... This this makes them waste me better for me, I think. Whoa, what? They're just playing around Stifle, I guess? It must have been playing around Stifle, right? 
Yeah, that's interesting. I think we're getting lucky here. <laughs> I, don't know. I agree. They, I'm not having any removal spell. It's kind of off. Their deck is all removal, and oh, well, that's pretty ideal when too. You, I think you definitely draw the force, and yeah. the next turn we have four, it's like, yeah, I think. I can't even imagine them getting out of this now. That was weird. That was very weird. But, you know, we take those. I really just expect. I, I was like 100% abrupt a case happening that turn, right? <laughs> it just felt there like it. No veil to the deck. Well, the thing is, Veil isn't as good in Delver decks as it looks like. Like, it, mm -hmm. just because you have green doesn't mean that. Stefan Swartz is a silly goose. Uh, Norway Stavanger, the deck list should be on the left in the Cardboard Life extension. I yeah, do up. Just... Yeah. I, I update my deck list, unlike certain other people. We're not going to name <laughs> any names. Well. Um, the question yeah, is, if, if they play like a 3-drop, do I play into Veil? I probably am priced into it, right? Yeah, I think you do. That's Toxic Daily, right? I think that's the, well, oh, we, then they can't even veil. They can't even veil. That's so tragic. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, their name might rhyme with Bonarod Boss. <laughs> Bonarod Boss. I don't know who that is. I don't know. Were we paired? No, they were. They were one zero. They were one zero. I don't know. What... Who did they beat? They beat Medea. Medea is Delver, Blue Red Delver. But Blue Red is so much worse for that than Rogue, I think. For I, think, I, think I think their deck is generally supposed to beat Delver because I don't know what else they're supposed to beat in the format. <laughs> but we just, I don't know, like game one, I think, we we saw like correctly mm -hmm. that the Forager is like the all-in game plan that they can't really remove. In game two, they just didn't have any removal spells, which was very strange. Mm -hmm. uh, someone asks, why no Uro? Uh, Uro, I don't know. Uro felt off in the rug shells to me. I can't really explain why. Um, and Forager has felt, you know, frankly, it's been really good so far for me. Yeah, Forager is... It's a, a, a strange version of uh, Arcanist. Mm -hmm. I know. It's like an Arcanist Delver that's slower, mm -hmm. easier to remove for some decks, harder to remove for some other decks. Basically. Um, yeah. All right. I, I'm uh, kind of. I don't know why they like, they, like played library there and then had nothing like no other removal spell or something. It's kind of weird. This is for White Faces Faith's reward. A classic that card is, is, is a very white faces card. Yeah, it's, it's also like, a Sifka oh, card. Like, yeah. Voidly <laughs> speaking, that's that doesn't roll off the tongue. I don't I think I have to pass on that. The opposite of Frank is beans. Wow, Chad is just uh popping off. Loyally speaking, Frank Lloyd. You know the architect. This is, this is like some real, real nonsense. In red <laughs> language, thing <laughs> that I'm not into. Like, how would Minifer say unfathomable? Yeah, I don't know. Unfathomable, probably. That's the correct pronunciation. The match went really quick, but the prelims go really fast. I don't know if you've noticed that. Yeah, we also just had like I don't think DNT ever goes super long against them. I guess some some games do, but and then like yeah. All right, I'll show you Look my both matchups where you want to like. Oh, we were doing that. No, so this one's fat. Even uh, weirder, you just race. You just try to make as many correct moves in three minutes as possible until you time out. All right. Uh, 
I'm not super in the mood to do that, but oh, no, I'll just, just do it and I just let you do it <laughs> and just see what's and maybe thought. say something. Green ABC one two three. <laughs> uh oh, what's the play? I don't know. Um. Well, you have this rook, I guess. I don't know. No, that was wrong. And if you get it wrong, it it eats time. Oh, that's very punishing. What? Oh, I see. Yeah, that, that we had that. Oh no, bit. that was wrong. Uh, I don't know. No! Oh no! My my last run right before you came on, I got like twenty five in a row. Okay, I see. It's uh, all falling apart. It is. <laughs> oh. Not like this. Heck. Oh no. Uh blah 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 blah. Wow, this is hard. I do. Yeah, yeah. That was not the clearest one because it's so cramped. Uh, let's see, is this just is that free? No, it's not free. Can I make it free? Maybe it's still right. Okay, it was right. Weird. A so-called value trade, generating value. Now what? Oh. Oh, that was wrong. Ugh. All right, 13 was not great. Uh, so, yeah. Kane, I have no idea what you were talking about because that was probably like seven puzzles ago because this is supposed to be a speed run. This is actually the shit I think you would be into, Kane. Where you just like spam. Well, you speed run, rather. Let's see, how much time do I have left? One match left, all right. I'll try again and... Oh, wait, I can yeah. work at my failed puzzles. What did I do? Huh. No, didn't like that. Did this? Oh, it's that. I see. You're very slow with chess. Well, so am I. Well, I guess I've been training a little bit lately, but most of these puzzles were easy. Which I guess is kind of the point of you're trying to speedrun them. That one was like 1306 and 1291. I mean, even if they are easy, it's still pattern recognition. So. Right. I'm gonna be right back in okay. like two minutes. Nope, didn't like that. I don't know what was wrong with that. I prefer Brazen Borrower for a lot of reasons.
Mm, didn't like that. I have TSO. I have. I'm not particularly good, so it's not that helpful for me. Plus, classical is really kind of slow paced, but. Hmm, didn't like that. Is this hanging? Hmm, all right. Okay, uh, sorry chat. Burn some, burn some of that energy off. All right, what is chat saying? Have I been watching the candidates? One bone crusher? Oh, I hung the queen. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it's easy to miss those things, especially when trying to speedrun the puzzles. And yeah, I think borrower is generally better because just having a, like an unsummon that's attached to a three one flyer is more valuable in rogue. Like imagine like Chalice of the Void or something similar, you know. Well, you didn't miss oh. anything because Yoshivada is still in game three versus Aussie. Huh. Uh, so someone was asking in the chat, there's actually a big chess tournament going on in person. It was a continuation of a tournament that got delayed last year. Oh, okay. It's like um, you had to qualify it through being like a highly rated GM, I think it looked like. Hikaru did not qualify is how competitive it, it is. Well, oh really? Well, yeah. Let's see who who's the list of the candidates. Candidates tournament. Oh, so this I believe this tournament is for the right to challenge Carlson for a uh, world champion. Oh, okay. so that's actually a kind of a big deal. So it's kind of big, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Vienna almost got the uh, got the site for that in 2020, but it was not to be. Damn, friggin' COVID. Yeah. Well. Oh well, no, I, I think they just picked a different city, but also COVID oh. delayed it as well. So. Uh, why? Why is elves very strong? The matchup for Stover, I think, is favorable, but. It's sort of volatile in a post-board game, is how I would describe it. Sometimes you just get forked, forked, submerged, whatever, and then you just, then you need to find a way to win, and if you can't because you're too low on cards, then, then you just die. And also one thing that's really weird recently is elves used to be like able to grind with a stellar in a way, like you could mm -hmm. like decay their threats, and then like get get an ooze and just win by playing fair, but that doesn't really work if they have the, the whale, the ethereal forager, because you can't really remove that card without Assassin's Trophy. So what I've seen Newton doing is actually play Crawl Harpooner. <laughs> uh, so, straight from uh, Standard. Yeah. Well, former Standard. I used to play that card versus uh, the Mono Blue deck because it would kill all of their one drops and block another Me one. Me as well. Me as well. I definitely reduced their death card for a PT. It was probably yeah. Pro Tour Ravnica Allegiance, right? Yeah, it was that one. But the thing is, um, Elves itself is so inherently powerful still. Mm -hmm. Like, even the bad matchups, you're not that bad against anymore, I feel like. Chalice is, like, so much better now with, <laughs> with uh, right. Shepherds. Blue decks are easier, even. And then, like, obviously, there's still combo decks, but 
some of them like are beatable with thoughtsies, very, and some of them are like are beatable with leyline, and some of them are like really hard, obviously. Like sometimes, like you play against mm. blue green omnitel, and I don't know you. Depending on how fast they draw, is you can do shit. But overall, I think Elz is very solid. I'm not sure, like, like if it's like, like if it depends on like people like not like really paying the sideboards a lot and like the respects for it, you know? Because like sometimes I feel like if people would just play one or two more sideboard cards against the Elves, it would be significantly weaker. But you only have so many sideboard slots. Yeah, like one one thing about Elves is I think if everyone played like three plus plague engineers in decks that could play them, it would become a lot worse. Like you're not really looking for that sort of metagame, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm actually even thinking more than that. I mean, uh, uh, from the elf side, I definitely have beaten games where my opponent has double plague engineer and stuff like that. It has to happen sometimes. Mm. It just can DK one and like bait them to like like sometimes you you can create board states where they don't they don't, they have to not name elf, which is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes you have metal sentinel. Like mm -hmm. Wirewood and Arbor, and then in response to the Plague Engineer, I balance my 1 1 Elf. And then if they say Elf, you just don't play that out again and play for like waiting for a Glimpse, BK, or Natural Order. So, like, you can still win against the card, but it's obviously if people just play a bunch of removal and then mm -hmm. follow it up with Plague Engineer or Forge Bolt or Blazing Volley and stuff like that, yeah, it gets much worse. Yeah, I think the grindy cards from Delver switch the dynamic. Like, Ethereal Forger is really not a card you want to play against because it just yeah, means Ethereal all of your stuff is going to die again. Yeah, yeah, that, that card, uh, Ethereal Forger, is what made me play less Elves after I started <laughs> playing more. <laughs> Ethereal Forger doesn't feel very great to play against with Elves. Yeah, I think I was wrong to hate the Forger as much as I did. Like, the reasons... <laughs> It's like a fragile card in a middle room. Yeah. That's like the main issue with it. Like they it's very dazable, it's very power blastable, both and boltable. Like uh Dreadhorde Arcanist was more uh, was harder to kill in the Delver Mirror, which is funny. <laughs> but yeah. the the thing is, like, there's so many matchups where like the forager is actually kinda hard to remove for the opponent. Even for D and T, they can't skyclave it. They can actually flicker with it, which is kind of relevant. Yep, canister confirmed playing mono red, stompy. Uh, <laughs> he's gone on record. He doesn't really like uh, legacy. I think he said that multiple times. But that's okay. You don't have to like everything if you like magic. Uh, Ermiko, what they did was they separated all of the showcase events to be on four different days. So I kind of want to play all of them, or at least like three of them. And so you need like at least 120. Uh, DT Warch asks, it, maybe he'll like it more if he did something other than jam Blood Moon every time. He played Eldrazi Post in the past. Do you remember if he played something else besides his deck, Stefan? Um, Canister? Yeah. Uh, I, th I saw him play Lands once. Hmm. Uh, but that's very long time ago. Oh, I do remember. Oh, he messaged weird. me about it. That's why. A long time ago, he messaged okay. me about it. <laughs> Let's see if I can... Dance. I mean, it was right after I, like, crushed... Yeah, I don't really know when it was, but it's definitely one or two. At least more than one or two years ago. Okay, he messaged me December 14th, 2017. Yeah. That's, it's that's easy to remember about. because he didn't message me after all of that. So I just scrolled back. <laughs> oh, he asked me why I played Seismic Assault in my deck. Can I can? Can I can. So, usually they are on... They didn't reveal Garuda, so that means they're on Chain of Smog. They play the Chain of Smog control deck. 
Probably. Do you yeah, have to keep... awkward. I don't know. It's close. I think I reluctantly so, so what keep. Are, what are your bad draws? Spells that are not cantrips. And lightning bolt. And Delver. I, I mean, Delver is Delver's not. Okay, I, I, was, I was gonna say the opposite. Delver is one of your good draws. <laughs> um. So we're. Yeah, I it's, 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 it's kind it's, of a game. Yeah, I think you're actually about. 66 percent to the hit. The thing is, also, our opponent is not likely to play Wasteland. Yeah. So. Well, that's so that good. was a good draw. Play my Savannah Lions. Woohoo! I haven't stamped one of these from this being passed in a Modern Horizons draft on day two of a GF. I'm just like, what the hell is going on? This card's like top five cards in the set. Wait, it's... when did you get the pass? Like, which pack or like which pick? That's uh, it was. Pick. Pack two, pick two, which I think is early enough that you can still switch for it. It's like so easy to splash. It's just That's so true. broken and limited. Like you just sit yeah, there and you. Yeah, it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're on the chain control combo deck. I um, assume this matchup was fine. It, yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm kind of confused why they didn't. Well, I guess it's it's very marginal. Okay, we don't care about that. I mean, you could technically force it, but yeah. the thing is, Chain Smog has to empty their hand. So, question is, um, I think do I you just... spend mana, or do you leave a Bora, or I think I just what pass. You... I want to pass, and if they don't do anything, I'll just bounce this end step. Yeah, I think I like that. I didn't even really have to think about it, even though I drew a Brainstorm, because I think it, it's so natural to do that, well, you don't want to brainstorm this turn anyway. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the other other thing. It's very intuitive. Sometimes I don't say why I'm making him play because I just my brain tells me it's right. But since I've been losing a lot lately, I've been questioning even those plays a little bit. <laughs> it, it's a really bad thing to lose confidence in yourself, but that's it happens true. sometimes. Green, green. Well, um, I don't think we... I mean, you could technically... Right, but do we care about the land? Well, actually... The thing is also Uro, but... Yeah, there's Uro and there's Wasteland if it's in their deck. That's what I'm scared of. They could have switched okay. a version with Wasteland. Like, their last version didn't have Loam, so I actually am kind of fond of this. Okay, so we pitch Bora number two, yeah. probably? Yeah, okay. By the way, Forager looking excellent in this matchup. Bug decks just really struggle to beat this card. Like, yep. They drained me for one though. Powerful. They're gonna drain you for another one. Yeah, I think you just let that resolve and then ask them. Yep. I could have bounced it with the loam on the stack actually, and I probably should have considered that. that. No, I thought about it and I think it's wrong. Gives too much info for the pawner. It's fair. I don't think the one life. We're not gonna lose by one life point in this matchup. I guess we could because of Apprentice, but... You could, but I think it's it's still wrong. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Wouldn't be hard to convince me to, to, to like, do that. Land would have been insane there. Um, well, I guess we're supposed to preordain off... Maybe off drop, even. I think off drop, because if I have a bolt, I want to leave it up. I'm not even sure if you want to leave up anything. Oh, there's a land. Do I want the Delver? So, I don't know. Question is even if you if you want the land. Even, well, the land is kind of good. I think I do want the land. It's close. So the thing is, would you? So okay, uh, would you level up the hex drinker this turn if you drew the land? Because if you don't, then you might want to draw the Delver as a pitch card. I see. But I think, um, what would I do actually? <laughs> I haven't thought about what I would do. Um, I feel like I would, I would actually just level it. Like I would level it up twice actually, because yeah, the so thing I... is, it, it, it's kind of yeah. And then you bottom the number, obviously. 
it's weird because now you spend mana on it and like you kind of wanted them to like have to leave up DK, you know, instead of you pay yourself paying mana. But we don't really have anything to do with our mana way other than waiting for Brazen Bora and Forager. So like this at least forces them to like cast push now or Oh, so they switched to Vogue's version. Well, no, because it's bug, right? Oh, they... I guess, yeah, you're right. So they built a, a Vogue-ish version. Obviously, I'm describing <laughs> that every time, but... Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So I guess we untap in Forager? Yep, yep. And hope you to probably brainstorm. You probably brainstorm before you cast it, so that you yeah. can put the brainstorm. Like it depends on obviously. This is kind of scary. Now we're exposed to the combo, sort of. Yeah, I mean, you could have also kept the force, but then you don't have any pressure. Then you're like just all in on the borer, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I would brainstorm. That's, I mean, it's still really awkward because of the, the Raven's Crime, but that's decent. What if I just don't shuffle this turn? I would not shuffle this turn. Yeah, so I should put Goyf Fetch on top. Yeah, yeah, that's... Well, actually... Hmm. So the thing is, if they cast, they cast the Raven's Crime once, we can't force anymore. Like, I'm, I'm saying, like, maybe you still want to keep the Fetch in hand just to discard it. So what am I putting on top? Oh, the problem is though. Oh, then because they have exactly point. four mana yeah, currently, yeah. so it's kind of bad. I guess, I don't know what to do there. I guess I think, yeah. I guess yeah. I think the way you wanted to play it was my, the way I wanted to do it anyway. But yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Obviously, we might lose, but that's okay. Yeah, I was trying to find a way to not lose there, <laughs> but... I don't think it exists. I mean... I think it might. Because they might not... Well, the, the way there. you they don't... They might not go for it anyway there, right? Well, so, like, okay. they might not go for it this turn anyway. So, so they might Raven's Prime first, and then you exactly. discard the Blood Strand, and then you draw into the Force next turn. But it's still a little risky somewhat, you know. It's probably better to do it this way, because... That at least gives us the Forager attack. So they cast Wither Blue and Brand this year, I think. And we're like, oh, they cast Loam. That's bad for us. They haven't been wrong. What if I just force it? And then what? And then get back Force of Negation from the Forager? Yeah. Like, yeah, if that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably better to force it then. Also, they tapped in a way that they can't cast any green spells anymore. That's kind of weird. They should they, have left them. Yeah, I, they shouldn't have tapped both green. So we get. So we do we get force of negation? I think so. I mean, you could get a counter, but I think it's better to get force of negation. So. I think so too. And then the question is, do you play the fetch? My top card's Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I mean the top card doesn't really matter in this spot anymore because like the Forger solos them, so. I'm just thinking about like if do you just accept that the that you lose to land Raven's Crime, Chain of Smog, Apprentice? I don't think I have to play my you... land. I think I can play around it. Cause like we don't have that many good cards to draw anyway. Right. There's only bolt really. Everything else needs hand space anyway. So we just can't keep vanilla cards in hand, is what I mean. If they Crime me, I'm just discarding the land, and then if they yeah, crime exactly. me again, then I'll play the borrower. I mean, you could also force of negation to crime, and it's and gone for good. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. So, I guess now I have to fawn the crime. Yeah, but they're just going for chain of some Wait, they can't wait. That doesn't make they're it. targeting they're me. About? Yeah, well, that, that means that you have to crime, right? Because. It Are means they have another one in hand, probably. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Interesting. 
So there is a ways to play this. We could we could go for the brainstorm here. I think I am going to because just finding a bolt for that relieves a lot of pressure. Yeah. Could go for the brainstorm, yeah. yeah. And the land isn't great. The Tarmogoyf's like not really necessary either, so I think yeah, it, I agree. It makes a lot of sense to do that. Okay. That's not great. That's not great, yeah. Should I just waste them and play Goyf? Because I know their hand well, doesn't that... have any lands, right? But what does wasting do? Why not play the fetch instead? Because that... Oh, no, I see. Never mind. Um... Yeah, I don't think you want the wasteland here. Yeah. Uh, uh, other than like them like drawing or maybe... But yeah, I think I, I, I want to play fetch, play goyf. And then probably in upkeep we fetch. And you could draw the wasteland if they've been Uro here. But we're probably not going to do it. Also, this way, you could technically have bolts. Mm -hmm. So they might maybe not go for it or something. Sedgemore Witch? Interesting. So their deck is really focused around casting spells. Yep, yep. And their last card's Loam. Really weird deck. Well, it's not that weird. Actually, it kind of makes sense, right? Um, the word I'm looking for is really interesting deck. I didn't mean weird. Because this if is we definitely interesting. Witch, if, if we knew about the witch, then we should not have played the Goyf, but we didn't know about it. Yeah. Then we should have played the Brazenborn instead. I actually didn't think about that. By the way, the way this deck is configured, Rough Tumble actually looks decent. <laughs> oh yeah, it does. Uh, which is kind of weird. Normally, I don't do that, but um, the forager. Well, we could get force, but no, that doesn't make sense. They have Raven's Cry. No, you get you get to preordain. Yep. I think I just attack with both and try to. Actually, I maybe. Think you're supposed... um, so the thing is, you can't block menace anyway. Other well, you um... could play a second goyf, and then you could block. But I, I kind of. The problem is they just they they're gonna have a lot of pests anyway. Okay. Yeah. So like what? No, no, no. I, I think I would. Well, it's it's actually it's so annoying that we can't preordain pre combat here, because that wouldn't yeah. give us like uh, all the info we need. I think it works out that I'm supposed to just not attack with it. Because otherwise, you might take a hit from Wither Bloom. We don't know yet. So... Yeah, off Volk, I think. Because you're not likely to cast more red spells. Huh. The land's actually kind of good, I think, right? Is it? Do you plan on playing both threats? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think because the land also makes you able to get the force maybe next turn and then hard cast it or something. A bolt doesn't do it anyway. I mean, a bolt kind of would have been good still. Yeah. I there is feel like if if we are gonna if we're gonna able yeah. to tap with this, we're we're good. But this is this is really hard. Like I think we're gonna lose actually to the triggers from this. Oh, they didn't dredge loam. Well, if they, oh, if they no, true. I see, yeah. Well, we, you could you could get Force of Negation next turn, and then it's like, you know... I don't know, I feel like... I feel like we would not lose to the triggers, but it's very, very, very close. These Tarmac so, so are basically to... worthless. Is I think my... Gosh, I wish there were... I wish I'd snuck this borrower into play earlier, somehow. That's what I really wish, right? Yeah. I feel like the turn, the one thing that we could have done differently 
is the turn where we played the Goy, which you're probably flashing a Brazen Ball instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that that just shortens the clock by so much. Oh, I wasn't see. I wasn't. Okay. Uh, I didn't see the Sedgemore Witch coming. To be honest, I forgot. Did we think about Abundant Harvest and Rug? Uh, I'm gonna no, I didn't. Yeah. Alright, so I think I should put Fawn from this one and Force into my hand and just attack and say go. I actually am winning currently if I just Fawn their next spell. If I just Fawn their loan. Yeah, you just Fawn their next... I think you are winning anyway. Like, I mean, I know some cards that could be problematic here. But... Yeah, we don't say them though. You just don't we say just them. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Ari taught me that. Ari's like, why would you mention Gutshot on my Vault Scourge when it, that's the only card we can lose to from Burn? <laughs> uh, Ari and I have had some good team tournaments together. Even if they draw Smog and Arcist Abe, we can just... No, them. they dredged Loam, so I cast this on that and they lose. Yeah, they did, I think. Wow, that was a crazy game. I didn't... I mean, they're at 6, right? Yeah, you just found that, and it's game over. And I, funny now, um, the thing is, if they attack with everything, make sure to not block and yeah. pass. Because yeah, because it'll go to seven. Just, yeah. Yeah. They can only deal me seven damage. Anyways. You would just double block the Sagemore Witch. Because... Yeah. yeah, this is just draft 101. Don't block a pest. Just don't do it. I've played against a lot of pests lately. Yeah. We could actually have Fawn pitched, and then we had the Brazen Board in play, so that would have been better. But oh, sure. We had, perfect, we had perfect info, so they were dead regardless. So it doesn't make a difference. Okay, they, they it's like, they tried. <laughs> Their deck is spooky, yeah. Ooh, Anarchist Ape is also trying to decide what to submit for Mana Traders. Bomberman? Uh... I have not played that deck lately. It d has not posted any results either, so who knows. I don't feel like Bomberman is that good right now. I think a lot of its matchups got worse, especially Elves. Blast is like not even that good versus them. Uh, Blast is awkward. I I'm kind of eyeballing all the Grey Fade, to be honest. Yeah, I am. <laughs> what about Submerge? <laughs> Submerge seems fine. It's probably better than Fortfold, but Fortfold is also kind of good. It's kind of weird because Rough this card's also like great for some, like as we saw, right? You, you, okay, you could do something really great. You could side out Force of Will, but keep Force of Negation. I might <laughs> side out. Is it crazy to side out Delver's know. or Tarmogoyf? Oh, Delver. Uh, yeah, I would rather side out Tarmogoyf actually because of mm. the pests. I think Tarmogoyf is. Yeah. How about Days? Days is like not know, but... the best versus them from what we saw. Honestly, I really don't know how to sideboard in this matchup. But I feel like cutting on Goyfs might be good. Well, yeah, what oh, actually, Mandrill's over Barwer going makes more sense, I think. Even like. Why that? Well, so if they get enough pests or just the ground blockers in general, this is worse than a borrower. Plus, this is interaction for the combo. Okay, yeah, I can get behind that somewhat. Yeah, let's let's do that. I mean, I'm siding in the rough tumble. I'm not sure. Oh, I, li I like the rough tumble. But yeah. It's it's yeah. The, based on the cards they showed us, this card looks excellent versus them, right? Yeah, yeah. So, <sighs> Uro or not? That's like the only question. I guess yeah, like we have Uro right. sort of covered, right? What do you side out for the blast? Yeah, you can also oh. like in a, in a pinch. You can also no. Well, I I kind of like Fortfold actually. I, I I would would just leave it like that. Mm -hmm. and just try. It's kind of interesting that we end up this way. This is really a really strange. It's like sideboarding against D and T plus combo at the same time, like D and T plus something plus lands at the same time. As you're, it's like playing against the same. Like you bring in the same cards almost. Well, I guess we don't didn't bring in Wilton Blazing Molly, but you 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 bring in removal of spells and Great Hood. Yeah, it's like sideboarding against some green creature deck with with cards that you have to counter. It's very strange. Well, that's sad. This is fine. Well, so they probably have wasteland. 
that's what we yeah what we found out. i want to bottom the second wasteland is that crazy no i think that's fine and that's what i was going uh, to say actually yeah. I just want to like, curve like my threats ideally, out. Ideally, you would want to bottom the island there, but I think it's just way too risky. That's a good draw, actually. If I'm going to draw yeah. land, I would want to draw that, not volcanic. <laughs> That's true. Does Doomsday make sense against open lists? Well, it doesn't get much better against open lists with Doomsday. I think it might actually be a little bit worse for you because people are just not going to keep hands with removal. Yeah, I think. I mean, it, it, it's complicated. Okay. All right. Good that we bought the wasteland. Yep. Because it doesn't do shit. Ooh, brainstorm's a nice one. I think you might just attack the pass, actually, still. Yep. Like, you could technically brainstorm into another Delver or Sorcery Cantor or Hex Stranger. But. I want to see what they do this turn. Yeah. I think I, now I just brainstorm. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, they, they just let it go instantly. I'm going to just yeah, put the wastelands away. Yeah, just get rid of the wastelands and slam the dust clothes, I think. <laughs> that's that's the main goal here. It's kind of nice looking, as a backup. Yeah, it, it's looking kind of good, actually, you know. Because even if the Delver dies, now we have two backup threats. I was I was calling that I guess they were very likely to have that because they just passed, and now they need to like I don't know what they, I don't even know what they do against Clove. <laughs> so. Unravel the Aether, or try to overload it with Sed Sedmorch Wish is Sedmorch, actually more. Yeah, yeah, that card is definitely. I think that card's actually. I would. I think it's it's like a yeah. black young pyromancer, kind of. But better with Sometimes Fluster Storm. Yeah, sometimes God. better, sometimes worse. They love doing this. Uh, I guess it I might know, be more correct not... in their deck. Plus, they can dredge away bad cards, so... Maybe they're not used to playing Brainstorm, because they usually play Chalice. <laughs> and that's kind of not... I mean, I think they've probably played with enough Brainstorms, but I think the real reason is they'll probably dredge away bad cards. Yeah. But there's some nuanced stuff that I... I yeah. I was seeing in those games so far. That, like, I, I was... I was questioning stuff, but yeah. So the question like, is, what they could have, yeah. Should I fawn this loam? I'm not even sure. Don't know. I think I'm not supposed to, and I'll just I, fawn. I don't, I don't feel like you care. Yeah. I think what I should actually do is fawn a... Uh, Ravens Crime. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's the card you care about right now. Exactly. Because like we, we kind of beat Euro, we beat Loam. Yep. We beat most things here. What's that? Oh I don't, we care. don't care. That's... Yeah, Clovis is kinda nice against these decks. <laughs> Remember when you told me to cut the quarter cutting for a second, Clothis? It looks like a genius maneuver here. <laughs> genius maneuver, yeah. Uh Almost. so I go after a loam. I think. Yeah, one loan down. Do I even play the Delver out? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to. I think what I'm going to do is just say go. Yeah, I, do, and I just, think you just play... Yeah. You're just a like Clothis control deck now. <laughs> that happened a lot when I played this deck in the past. Yeah, I think I you think remember that. Very, yeah. yeah, I remember. I think it's very very likely to happen against these decks. Remember when I played the Quothis Control Mirror that lasted until like turn 18 my opponent eventually lost? Oh, you showed me that. <laughs> yeah, it was so, so like, kind of dumb. <laughs> and Quothis is insane. So there's the first card that we somewhat care about. Um, yeah, but I'm not forcing you it. Still, you still just let it resolve, yeah. Okay, still would just let it. Yeah, I think I, you can bounce and step. Well, I also kind of just hope that they turbo try to kill me because this situation is not even that good for them, right? Agreed. Maybe if we draw enough 
blue cards, we can play the Delver so that the Strix stops attacking. That could be actually a thing. Because like we mm -hmm. could like obviously we're gonna be at high life total because we gain two every turn, but at the same time, the only way we really lose is them killing us with damage here because we have to combo covered. Mm. We have Earl covered somewhat. They can't really interact with Clothis, so. So am I bouncing this? Yeah, I mean you could also flash it in for damage, but I think I mean, there might be. But the thing is, they might have DK up. Like, they pass oh, with sure. mana again. They snap they, with that resolve. They, so I don't they think they have Veil in their hand. There's actually a... Now we drew a thread that actually matters. Yeah, I think you just play that and level it up twice and pass. And they're probably just going to kill it. Or maybe they don't have DK. You don't know. They're forced to have DK. Because otherwise, this is going to get real big. So something I used to do, I didn't do it this game, is I used to keep track of what lands were loomed back, but I got lazy. You're supposed to do it. I usually do that as well. But yeah, I just... It's kind of kind of hard when streaming and talking. <laughs> yeah. Or like, like, or like, I didn't really pay attention. We could have forced that, to be honest. But... I don't really think yeah. you want to do that. I think... That'll get you killed more often than it should, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. They could have Chain of Smog and then Kalaras. Yeah. One thing I've noticed about their deck is actually Chain of Smog is so much better in their deck than it, than in other versions I've seen. Because yeah, they... you're so likely to have your hand padded with lands that you can afford to just like fire it on your opponent. Loam and Raven's Crime are definitely yeah. good with, with Chain of Smog and Urize as well. So this is like a real... So, wait, wait, um... Oh, I can just eat it with Quothis and discard like a Delver. But maybe it's still correct Quoth Fawn. Do they still have a land drop? Yes. Yeah, maybe you have the Fawn still. Because like they could, they, they have a land from Loam still. They have two lands from Loam, or, or three even. Yep. I think it was... Two and then like the last loams, they, they probably have three or more lands in there, so they would cast it twice anyway. So this, yeah. So forcing this makes you able also to snatch the loam. So yeah, you you have to force the negation still. If they had no land drops left, maybe then. Whoa. Oh. Uh, they're probably getting. Oh, they're really getting low. Interesting. Well, they, they just really them. value protecting it from clots, I guess. Okay. Yeah, it does make sense. I just didn't expect them for to, for them to play it here from their hand, obviously. Yeah, I agree with the sanctuary. No, it makes sense. If you play loam in a lot of lands and it's good with your magecraft cards, I really like their deck actually. I also like the card we drew. Probably just fatal push. Um, it doesn't really matter. I would take DK if you if you if you take okay. fatal push. Why not DK? Sure. You could probably well. I guess bluffing the blast is worth it, right? Yeah, I think so as well. Plus, I took all of the charm glyphs out of the deck, right? I did. Yeah, so just I agree, eating. I agree. Yeah, then it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's fine. Sort of. You, you are not supposed to interact because if they have changes, one you die. Right. God, I wonder if I can outrace it again this game. I don't know, but it's gonna be close. That's for sure. Maybe I'll brainstorm into rough tumble. That will be easy. The card would just win the game. The yeah. other problem is the Bifflestrix gets to block my Forager. Yep, yep. Which I didn't mention, but I don't really want to submerge that Strix because it kind of like... Actually, maybe I'm supposed to. Yeah, I also thought about the Witch in Grixis. Like, you could technically play Grixis, whatever, Control or Delver with the Witch. Yeah. Well, I guess in Delver you would play... Are still over it. You could play both, though. 
could also play a chain of small green creatures. They're targeting themselves, so I let it resolve. Yeah, you just let them go. You just gave, give them enough stuff that they like get hellbent. Then you force it. Yeah, you're supposed to let it resolve one, more, one additional time. Because we don't, like, they just brainstorm. We don't know for sure. Like, it's probably a bad card because otherwise they would not do it. But still, I think you, you have to get rid of the last card. Like, they're not killing us anytime soon. Hey, actually, we got rid of Honor. That's kind of nice. So now we forced that. I probably, really I might put. Well, hold yeah, on. I thought about that already. Uh... Yeah, it's awkward. It's awkward. Do we think they have a second sanctuary? I have no idea, man. Uh... Well, you 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 should uh, close this on the chain just to find out, I guess. You just have to risk it, I think. I don't think they now... do. They um, could have it. They could have a six, seven, eight, nine. I think I have to develop my game plan and just attack and trade. Yeah, sitting is bad. I I think. I'm thinking about what to get from the. I think I should just get brainstorm because if I find a bolt, then I can clear the strix. It's probably correct. Yeah. You you can yeah 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 that's it's probably what you have to go for. Yeah. I don't I think playing the getting the force of negation back is too reactive. That's not great. Yeah. Um. Probably just force waste back. Well, what do we do with the loan? Well, what what am I doing with this waste, right? No, but like, what? Well, what is it like? Why do you want to keep Bloom over any other card? I think it's like the worst one. Oh, I see. So you want to keep? Actually, I would keep Fetch Forest. Yeah. Actually. Okay. I think that makes more sense. Yep. Six, seven, eight. Oh my god, they have so much power. Yeah, it's it's annoying. I think I'm probably dead, but. Yeah, the thing is still, but we we had to we had to give them the last chain of smoke because otherwise they'll just have ponder and cast ponder and they would have been the same. It would have been worse for us even. Well, how many looms are in their deck? Um, That's the third four. one. Yeah, it looks like four know. is actually the answer. Which is kind of killing us. Yeah, if we draw rough tumble though. Or cantrip into rough play. tumble, yeah. Yeah, then we just win the game, yeah. Their hand's just three lands, right? Yes. Alright. You can just flash it in. Sad that this can't block. Uh, it's, it's quite bad. <laughs> Here's I'm dead. I'm dead. That was sad. I think we played that pretty well, actually. It's just the the yeah, value chain of smog was actually too good. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is definitely a better chain of smog control deck. Fair chain yeah. of smog use of usage deck than other decks. So I don't know about blazing Wally. I mean, blazing Wally would have worked here, but it's it's too. It's not time. good. I think. I actually, don't think we sideboard. The, Wrong later. Actually, I kind of hate this now, now that I've seen their configuration. They have so many loans. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm just going to have an additional threat, in, like maybe a Tarmogoyf or a Mandrills. Yeah, yeah. I don't know which one of those, but... I think this Mandrills. one, because decay. of the Decay, yeah. It's also interesting uh, to think about, like, Blast, but we can't... It looks we really have, bad for some. Like, we don't really have space. Well, you could, like, counter cantrips or something. Because like they have cards that you can't interact with other than Brave Fades. So um, Andy B asks, I could can you hold back forwarders and try to race that way? I think if you do that, you end up losing to way too much if you just let the game sit like that. I think if 
the borrower plus the cloth is technically five per turn but if you just sit there and don't answer any of their creatures they're going to generate such a huge advantage off of their magecraft cards uh, the thing is also if you if you don't attack with forager there you yeah. give them like you give them time to find another chain smoke i don't know how many chain smokes they have post board they probably side out like one or two but I think um, they might not side out any, actually, given how their deck is constructed. By the way, I, I chose to keep. Obviously, like, it's a little bit loose. I think we but... should have played a different land too long, but... Okay, well... Yeah, discarding land. Because now you have oh, to I brainstorm. Oh, I see. Like, yeah. maybe you just don't brainstorm. Yeah, I think you just don't brainstorm. I think you just play a fetch. I mean, I think it would have worked out the same way, yeah. The thing is just, um, I wanted to have the option to brainstorm. I'm definitely leveling up to just force them to have decay yeah. ASAP. This is a really fast clock. This is actually, I think, I prefer these hands to the hand we had last game. I mean, this is much better, yeah. For sure. If they can't even... Well, they could have push. But I would actually attack first before you, like, will do anything. Because, mm -hmm. like, if you level up, it's so bad. If they ever Agreed. Especially drawing the Forager, I think, makes it very easy. And they might push anyway. Question is, they're which one's target? Are... Okay, yeah. Yeah, and they're always going to target extra. To so now I can brainstorm into Forager, right? Yeah, yeah. Brainstorm, Forager. I agree. Put away those lands. Jam the Forager. I'm getting a Volk, Volk, I think. Because yeah. you already have a Volk in hand. I s nope, no Tarmoglyphs. But I don't have Loam in my deck either. So actually I should leave stuff in the yard for Clothis, just in case. That makes sense, yeah. I didn't think about that. Spellies in the belly. So well, this time only one Spelly. The the rise of bug decks I just think makes oh okay that's sort of annoying. Cantor yeah. probably okay. So they're just yeah. trying to kill us next turn. So we need to brainstorm into something good. Watch, we have a lot of good cards. Wasteland waste already does it kind of because then they go to seven mm -hmm. and they can't fetch anymore. We have a lot of good hits, plus we have like four looks, right? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of cast. Well, you no. attack first. No, no, yeah. You're always going to do that. And then you have more cards to put back, yeah. Yeah, if, yeah, that actually makes no. Yeah, it's not like. With Arcanist, it would have been deep. Okay, so. I think I just waste them this turn and. Put. Uh, Waste on top. Well, they could yeah. pass with Wither Bloom up, but does that matter? Yeah, I think you put Waste on top so you can cast a Brainstorm in case they like Raven's Crime. You're right, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. Well, the thing is, actually, if they Raven's Crime. Wouldn't it be better for you if you discard the wasteland and then get a brainstorm with like one more look? Yeah, yeah actually, so I, okay. actually, you're supposed to put brainstorm on top. Yeah. Did they show trophy by now? No, they didn't. Our last opponent showed trophy. Everyone, I think every bug deck is supposed to play some weird answer for whale. Um, Ozzy, uh, Vuk had a mystical dispute in verse me. Interesting. Okay, well, that's, that's kind of good and bad at the same time. It's, it's good because that means we can waste them again and prevent them from doing stuff. It's bad because we didn't have the Clothis on top now. <laughs> it's like, that would have been good. I think I should just brainstorm, though, because if I find yeah, our... You brainstorm yeah. off Volk. Yeah. All right, this is ideal, I think. I just put these two back. You definitely, you definitely have to waste them, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, agreed. That's why I'm doing this. I think the Hex Drinker is going to be irrelevant now. I agree. Okay, okay, I think we're probably done. 
The Forger was in absurd this game just because it was like a fast dove threat that they can't decay. And it got us a yeah. brainstorm back. I actually think these decks should run uh, run the foul. Oh, but, but here I would have traded with the Delver and but not the uh, Forger. I know, but yeah, then you can at least kill the Delver and run afoul foul the whale. Also, else. killing Merit Lage but, with that card yeah. is uh... <laughs> I feel like bug breaks are inherently bad against Merit Lodge. I guess Chain of Smog is like one of the first fair ish bug decks that is not that bad against Murat Lodge because they have a combo kill, but still, it would be nice to have more cards for that matchup. The problem is your combo is so slow that it's easy for them to just get to Wasteland Recursion or like P-Fire or something before that, right? P-Fire? Punching Fire. Oh, we, we are talking... Oh, I thought about Black Green Deaths. Oh, oh yeah, Black Green. Um, oh, sure. Yeah, I, mean, I guess against Lance is a different story, but I don't even know if you would sideboard in run a fall against. You probably well, it's do, better, but it's better than a lot of your cards. So yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, three zero. Getting some infinitely better than some of my other prelims lately. Let's not discuss that. <laughs> uh, do you think Tony Scopone is playing Ruby Storm? Um, I'm going with yes. Probably, or some chain of smart brew. They're a person who could play there. Like, they're not unlikely to mm -hmm. just play some Dijon combo brew or some painter brew or something. All right, let's get it done. Let's get that 4 0. Let's see. That, I don't know. Maybe I should just be playing the third whale like Daniel had, but I don't know. Kind of like two whales, one mandrels. Binu! They were last playing Rug. They often play Rug, right? Yeah, they're probably... Uh, they could also be on blue-red splash green, you know? Um, oh, they uh, had Bone Crushers and Uros in their last version. Yeah. Uh, I keep this every time though. Definitely keep awkward, but I keep. Like, it's not. It's not really awkward. So, but... is it cowardly to fetch island? Uh, I don't think so. Actually, I think that's why you have it in the deck. <laughs> well, there's a lot of reasons. I've been trophied a bunch lately and gotten the island. <laughs> that's also um, and then there's obviously blood moon and stuff. Mm -hmm. But and back to basics. If people still play that card, but. Um, I would get Island here, actually. Yeah, I think so. Kind of that's awkward. One way, one way to lose. Yeah. And also, if you get Island here, you're and you see like a Delver, then you can keep it even though you don't have a second land, which mm -hmm. would not be possible otherwise, probably. Or like you would mm -hmm. keep it and then lose to Wasteland. So I think yeah, you're supposed to get Island with hands like these, because you're gonna cast at least two two Cantrips the next turn, like uh, from from the beginning of the game. So you can use the mana of, of the island anyway. Right. The island mana. I don't think they're actually triple queuing. It says yeah. triple queuing in a legacy week in a casual league legacy tournament practice room. The thing they is, never, if they're... Yeah. They never seemed like a player in the triple queue to me. But maybe I'm wrong. I mean, it's possible that they're in like a casual legacy game. But even if you're in a Legacy League, it just shows you that if they're in the league, not necessarily playing the match. Yeah. The last time I triple queued was... Holy shit, I don't know. It's like... Oh, it could be Mana Trader, Trader Series. That makes more sense, actually. No, wait, no, that cut off on Wednesday, right? No, no, the thing is, yeah. Yeah. You're, you can't play Qualifier League anymore. Yeah, so that's not that. It, it finished on Wednesday. Yep, yep. I know for you is weird because you can only start playing matches at like 6 p.m. your time, right? Yeah, yeah, or like one hour. I think it was one hour earlier than that. Or maybe half an hour earlier than that. Okay. I don't know. It's like, yeah, it's pretty late to start playing matches. 
But yeah, it it was fine. Also, my sleeping schedule was super destroyed anyway at that point, so I didn't have a problem with playing matches too much. But now, but, now you're mostly back to okay, right? The next, the next match Raider is will be harder to get matches in because uh, now I have an normal <laughs> sleep schedule. Right. Uh, Yeah, that sucks. And <laughs> that's like the worst thing. I still remember the match we or uh, I played against Kai where he tanked forever, passed, and then died to my top deck lightning bolt. I'm just like, what the hell happened? It's just like so weird. Oh no, he passed twice, then died to my lightning bolt. But apparently, yeah. the answer was he was missed. He misstacked his uh his doomsday, which makes more sense. Yeah, in game one, he misstacked doomsday. Yeah. I don't know. It's always true. Once someone casts Doomsday, someone's going to lose the game within the next three turns. It's the qu whether it's you or your opponent. That's a very different story. <laughs> well, to be fair, <laughs> I mean it's definitely true. But to be fair, you could say if someone resolves Doomsday, <laughs> yeah, like sometimes yeah. it gets countered and then the game goes off. But... <laughs> oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. If someone successfully resolves Doomsday, just like yeah. Inverter of Truths. I love oh, Inverter yeah. of Truths. I actually, my favorite way to beat someone with Inverter of Truths was to attack them four times with it. And if you need more attacks to cast another Inverter of Truths, shuffling your new graveyard back in. Yeah, yeah. Inverter of Truths dies, died for Dig Through Time Sins, I, I feel like. I'm not sure. I feel like... It's also for Oracle Sins, right? Oh, sure. It's definitely Thoughts of Oracle. Oracle is definitely the broken card of all the combo pieces for that combo. Because <laughs> there, there's also Tainted Pact in Historic now. Like, there's a Tainted Pact combo deck that only works because Oracle is so cheap. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. Let's unpack that. Does it really work if you just rope out and your whole deck gets exiled while you're trying to do it? I have never seen it yet, but I heard from a lot of people that it works, yeah. I you heard you just mostly time out, but <laughs> who knows? Oh. Well, the thing is, it then just auto declines everything, I think. Well, uh, now's a good time to say if you enjoyed the stream and you enjoy Stefan, you can follow him at Da Cedrus on Twitter. If you want to support the stream, following and subbing is appreciated as well. well and that Twitter. The handle is actually. Uh, oh, King of Traders. King of Traders. Yeah. That's right. That's I forgot. I love Tainted Pact because it was like my favorite card to play in Singleton because obviously it's like a broken Singleton card, right? Yeah, it's like basically instant speed demonic tutor. That has some downside, but downside being exiling cards. Yo, you you'll helping about what you searched. You want to see something funny? You want to see a Twitter account that just followed me? Sure. This account literally just followed me. Jarvis Collins. What? It's the this is Tony Stark. I know, but his AI. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> just like, his AI is Jarvis. Uh, I, I don't. Why did this this account has to be automated as well? Like. It's clearly just like a robot account, right? Yeah, probably. Oh god. Just I don't know. Twitter is so funny sometimes. Being you joined the game. They joined the game. Oh, they just joined it now. Oh, you bet they only followed Jarvis? Actually, we could check that. Maybe they only followed Jarvis. Oh, they are only following people named Jarvis in the name. That's wow, so that's cool. brilliant. Anarchist save, good call. I did not think about that, obviously. 
<laughs> I thought about it a little bit. But... It, it's also including last name Jarvis, which is actually a pretty relatively common last name. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. Know. Are they mulligans? Yeah. Anyways, we're still waiting. We're still waiting for the BNU to resolve everything. All right. Uh, what was I going to do? Island, right? Yeah, island preordain, I think. It was like 20 years ago. I couldn't remember. <laughs> I think I, I think should just... My bottom, bottom for... I would keep the Delver, to be honest. But I mean, lands are obviously good, but... Like, Delver is better than most random cards, right? Should I keep... I shouldn't keep... Yeah, okay. No, the Forager is too greedy, right? Yeah. I'd, I'd keep the Delver, even though it can get dazed. I think it's still correct. They usually have all their cards foil. Am I dazing? Uh, I think you might, actually. So the thing is, yeah. Usually I don't like dazing this early, but you don't have a bolt. I also don't have and any you, red mana as well. So. And you, you don't have a second land, so... Ooh. This is quite interesting. I think I might just try to snap it off. Is that yeah, crazy? I think, no, I think it's correct, actually. It, so... This might sound like apish to just waste them, but the thing is, um, it also prevents them from casting Tarmogoyf on turn two or like Sprite Dragon the Empire Mancer. The version and I saw of theirs, uh, they had Uro and uh, Bone Crusher, so I think they're more mana hungry. Yeah, yeah, they have been playing a lot of different versions recently, I think, though. Okay, maybe, maybe they're on the rug version, I guess. I think they're on the bigger version, that's my feeling. Oh. Hmm. I think I just let that go, frankly. I think you let it resolve, because otherwise you lose two days really hard, and you're you're not unlikely to hit them for three years, I guess. Oh, but we have the Mandrills. I think, actually, you might want to play Mandrills and not Brains. Maybe that's crazy I'm thinking. Because, like, I don't want to get the Mandrills, let the Mandrills get these, and I might, like, just want to leave up one mana. Four days. I think I think you're right. Obviously, it sucks if I get wasted, but I'm ahead on board if I yeah. get wasted as well. So it's like and not. If the Madrid resolves, we are very, we are, we are kind of golden because uh, it kind of reduces the cards we care about. Like if Madrid stays on board, we only care about Goyf and Uro, I think, and nothing else. Maybe Brazen Bolt Car. But without the mandrills, we care about old, we care about mm -hmm. delvers and stuff like that. So we, we would not care about them otherwise. Wait, who is Ten Drills? Ten it's, I don't know. It's an excellent username, though, obviously. It, it has to be a person that has been known sometime, or I don't know. It has to be someone who likes Tendrils of Agony. Yeah. Or maybe they really just like having 10 drills at their house. I don't know. That's also kind of good. That's one of the cards we care about. But now I think it's really nice that we can Force of Negation pitch Brainstorm. Yeah. Because Force of Negation otherwise wouldn't do much in this matchup. Yeah, I think you just have the result. We are, we don't like we don't even know if it would have flipped. Okay, I think I think I think you're supposed to brainstorm. I think yeah. you're supposed to brainstorm. Like you could have obviously like Okay, so well now there is no other way to pull. I mean you could technically still play the Delver. I would I would not play the Delver actually, but I think so as well. That was yeah. a really not good brainstorm, but it was also due to us fetching island and stuff like that, but we would have fetched drop turn one anyway, I think. So then, like, it wouldn't really have mattered. Like, you could have also kept the brainstorm, but I feel like the upside of hitting wasteland or days or like any land that makes red, I think you let that go. They're like super fancy, everything foil out and mystical archive or whatever it's called.
don't really care about Wasteland. Okay, we care about that card. Even though it's a 3-4, it's a 3-4, but we still have to force it, I think. Um, are they trying to cheese us here with, like... With the days, yeah. Have, yeah. This is a very MTGO thing to do. No, I've I've had I I've actually gotten oh, some actually, of that. Yeah, it it can happen in paper, but yeah, it's the way less likely, right? <laughs> <laughs> because in FTGO, it's more likely to click through, even though you knew you shouldn't put mana into your pool. Whereas in paper, you need to literally forget that you need to put mana into your pool. Okay. They currently have to block, right? That's why. I, that's why they took four lands. I think they knew it, it was gonna die. <laughs> that's kind of funny, though. I like that. Just like very confident. Just See, playing the block what if this was a third forager? I would have probably lost this game. Actually, we have definitely lost the game. Yeah, I still might lose. Yeah, we still might lose, but whoa, that we looks that looks pretty good. sweet, actually. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. We still have a good shot at winning if we draw a red source. Okay, yeah, that's that was to be expected. That at some point, find anything. Days. Well, they can never attack, so and they just fetched, I think. Oh no, they did, no, they didn't shuffle. They didn't shuffle. Right, they, didn't they probably shuffle. found Tarmogoyf. That's that's what happened. They found Tarmogoyf, and that's what I had to keep the ponder. Looks like they're just passing. That's kind of sad. Cantrips or like cantrips or fetches are good. We have a lot of cards that are good. Even Force of Will but probably buys us enough turns that we can find something. That's good, yeah. And they are not a day a uh, stifle player, so yeah, then we just, just... Up here, yeah. hold them. Well, actually, actually, you might wait for. Wait, is it crazy to wait for Insta to play around Wasteland? No, actually, I think you're right. I think that's better. Yeah. And if they put Uro in the stack, then I can just respond and. Then you can still respond. It's very unlikely that it that it's that it's bad to do it this way, and we also don't care about that card anyway. Yeah, I think you're supposed to wait for end step. So because in case they play Wasteland, you can then end step bolt these bolt pay. Right. And if they, they are also not likely to play Wasteland if you have a faction play. This is it like a force of negation? Yeah, I would daze with the island. Because then in case I draw another red source, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we got them. Okay, we're paying though. Remember when they tried to waste us? Oh, they had another days. And now I know their hands yeah, two now, lands, so now it's... we know that they did. I would do it with lightning bolt and not not because, show them yeah. for it. Because they might play double deliver at some spot next game. Uh we're well, three. I don't know if you wanna... J I don't... J Yeah. Sorry. Uh JJ, it should be on the uh overlaid my record, right? Is it not? Fork, please. Oh, I'm not forking. Uh, these can leave. Those suck, yeah. This is like, okay. okay. Uh, loam, Loam is decent. Submerge, and they had Forager, so I think I like Power Blast. Mm -hmm. I might actually want to side up Forkfold anyway. Because, like, Fork, Forkfold doesn't hit Forager. Mm -hmm. And then, then the next cards I dislike the most are, yeah, those and Force of Will, basically. I shave two force of wolves. Sometimes I leave in all my forces on the draw, but yeah, I'm not... they are not a cycle deck. And sure, like what? What? What are you realistically forcing? It's Tarmogoyf, right? Tarmogoyf, Tarmogoyf or uh, Uro. Maybe back. Forager when you don't have an answer, but you have so many answers yeah. for that anyway. Yeah, and Uro. Okay, I think uh, you've talked me into not having it, and I don't really like Sylvan the matchup. I think it's like kind of. Volatile. Yeah, well, the thing is, against their list, it's better to have more cards because they're more controlly. But at the same time, we're on the draw. And I really don't like library. I really don't like library when you, it's so clear that you like the mm -hmm. like being on the draw makes you want to answer their stuff. Yep. 
if you do that successfully, you kind of win anyway. Like uh, unless they have Uro, but you know that's that's the advantage of their list, I guess. Yeah, Uro's Uro's terrifying for how I built the deck. I, I like library, library and mm -hmm. grind against Buck Delver. I like library, and sure. if I'm on the play, because if I'm on the play, it's much more likely that I don't take that much then. This has to be yeah. a keep. This, this, yeah, this can't ever be a mulligan in any world. That's for sure. Kind of okay, interesting. Um, like, there's two ways you can play this, right? I would actually fetch drop play over, but maybe that's crazy. That's not. I think my uh... plays around everything, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't cost. The, the one card it doesn't actually play around is Submerge, funnily enough, but I don't care if they submerge my yeah, Delver. If they submerge Delver, okay, okay. They got us if they, if they do that. I don't think I'm going to trade. There's a bunch of uh, reasons not to. The main reason is Tarmogoyf. Yeah. Well, that's also a reason, actually. Well, that's awkward, but I think it's still fine. I think you actually want to... I don't like waste. Well, actually, maybe wasting. Yeah, maybe wasting is still... I kind of want to cast Clovis at some point, though. This is weird. Um, Maybe you just... What if I just Delver plus Bolt? Yeah, I, I would actually Bolt first and then Delver. Yeah. I don't really care about the... I care about them having a Delver because we have so many threats anyway. Yep. It's, it doesn't really matter if they daze one. And if they fawn this, who cares? If they daze my Delver, that's yeah. actually fine. Yeah. Also, wasting them doesn't seem that great, because with library, they can just get back the resources. Like, yep. their life total isn't pressured enough right now. So they could definitely just pay for it to get an extra land, and then we kind of played into their cards by waste landing here. It's possible you could play some number of Young Pyromancer over Tarmogoyf, but... Yeah, uh, the thing is just, Tarmogoyf is just so good in Delver Mirrors. The, yeah, that's the big problem. I don't like having four Goyf in my deck generally, because then I'm more like awkward against Rest in Peace and stuff like that. But at the same time, Delver Mirrors are the, like, the closest matchups for the deck. Kind of. mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it really gives you a lot to have like Goyfs and... Mandras and Gwives are really good in Devil Mirrors. Whoa, they fetched then brainstormed? So they knew there were bad cards in back and they're looking for a removal spell for this, I guess? Yeah. I think they didn't find it. Or maybe they cast it up key. Well, oh, that's good. So, um... Sadly, we don't have days ourselves. Yeah, we don't care, really. I, I kind of want to play Gwives and waste them. I can but waste them first to play around days because that's their only boost. Oh, yeah, because they have a Taiga. They have a Taiga. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's for sure correct. I actually didn't think about that. I, I, I did that once as well, but I just forgot there because our deck cards are foil. It's confusing. Look, I don't mistake Taiga and Tropical. <laughs> I didn't mistake it, but. I know, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> it's confusing. I don't know why. Okay, they're gonna. They can't even cast Forger here. There's probably. Okay, well, that's fine. Good that we didn't play Clothis then. I would just replay Goyf. I don't even. Well, well, stop. Do you plan on pondering this turn? No. Okay, then ca then then do what you want to do. That's fine. Because like because... the thing is, drawing a land is fine. If I draw a land, I can slam yeah. Clothis next turn. So like. I, I agree. Yeah. I was just gonna say. If you ever ponder this turn, you have to fetch before playing the Goyf, I think. I agree, but... As uh, a submerge. But, yeah, but I... You're right, I didn't verbalize what I was thinking, but the answer is I don't fine. want to cast Ponder that turn. I mean, there are reasons for pondering in the turn, but I also would not have pondered. It's like, not a good ponder value, basically. <laughs> If land if land is a good draw, then I don't think you should. Uh... Okay, there is Clothis. So if we draw our own Clothis, uh, our uh, the fourth land, I mean, not our own Clothis. We have our own Clothis. What am I talking? I think I should um, just brainstorm. We're kind of want to kind of want to find backup for the Clothis. Exactly. Right? Like another threat would also be nice. 
Yeah. Well, that's good. So this is awkward because now we could technically resolve our two of this. Is that better than playing a forager? Forager is kind of vulnerable in the post board games. Is the problem, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know actually. How will this game develop? It's very interesting. So what, the um, hold on. So what I can do, and actually this might be. Oh no, that doesn't really work. The main problem here is that they are wasted, right? Because if you don't resolve Clovis now, they might waste you, and the next turn Clovis will get these. So I think what I'm supposed to do is just put these two back. Is keep it everything. Or, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, Forger yeah. or Conquest. That was what I was thinking about. It's, it's either for, Forger also gets blocked by their Brazen Bora. Yep. And they probably exile the bolt anyway with Clovis. Yep. Unless you play the Forger this turn, obviously. But I feel like it's better to play the Clovis. Uh, we should have played pre combat probably. Oh, in case if they it's double better. days, right? They can't, they can't double days. They have Tiger and <laughs> with that, but. <laughs> Uh yeah, generally probably. I'm just doubling up on all of the duels, obviously. I, I guess I guess playing pre combat is worse than submerge, so I think it's actually it's actually better to play post combat. Yeah. Yeah. Then we days back. Yeah. Don't don't really know. Which I, one. Really, it doesn't really matter. You could probably not work right. out. It does. I think matter. it's not right thinking about because the game's gonna be go gonna go long because the clothes cancel each other out. Yeah, this is going to be like a turn 18 affair, probably. <laughs> Although, yeah. it's a problem because my opponent has library and we don't. You know, I'm usually a fan of like thinking about every detail, but in this case, I'm not thinking Whoa, about Whoa, they made mana. <laughs> that means they... What does that mean, actually? Like, it means really... they want to play two spells through a daze, I think, most likely. <sighs> is that Uro waste, or what? Well, if, if you play Uro, it gets eaten, right? So that doesn't really... Oh, it's just Bone Crusher. It's a 3-4 Bone Crusher. They want to play around days, that's why. Okay, that's fine. We have to ponder to get the Goyf bigger than their thing. Probably eat stuff that you don't want to see in the Forager. Probably Brainstorm, probably. then. It's probably actually Brainstorm, yeah. yeah. Um... What's the correct sequence here? I think Can I should play Gwife, then, then Ponder. Uh, yeah. I don't know if they would have another days, but does it really? Yeah, it, it's like it doesn't really cost you anything to. Ooh, this one. okay. That's good, I think. I kind of don't want to have to brainstorm. I kind of want to have Blast, Manders, and Brainstorm later. Because sure. if you have to Blast, I would draw the Blast actually, because they might like. Flashing Brazen Borer and like. So, one, one counterpoint to that is if they find another Wasteland, I would rather brainstorm before throwing the mantles, well, then right? You can make mana with Clothis. Oh, you're right. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's definitely right. That ponder's obscene here because of the creature sizing. Stop and draw step is helpful with Clothis. I agree, but we in, in this case, we don't really need it. Right. Oh, I've, I, I've run the draw step stop many times. Mostly, yeah. it comes up when you want to port your opponent's lands and then play like a haste creature with goblins. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Okay, so Goyfs are obviously out of range again, but oh, like they trade, but we, we might just want to trade, actually. I think I, sh point. I am supposed to trade because the race favors me otherwise, right? Yes. It's kind of nice because like they go, they go down to one. We power blast the guy, then we play the Mandros, and then like, yeah. It's Do I even need to power blast this creature? Like, does it even matter? Well, no, no. You definitely let it resolve, but because it can't block. But uh, they have they have one card. It doesn't really matter what I exile, I guess. I guess creatures yeah. and then fetches. I don't know what to exile there. Actually, maybe like. Maybe you leave a creature in case they. I think you leave a creature probably, but it's like just so that Goyf can stay big. Yeah, we don't actually care about the Borer. 
because it can't block anyway. We're at 18, they're at 1. It seems like yeah. the least relevant borrower. It's Rashad yeah, and Airship I, now. I kind of forgot that it can block. That's kind of weird. <laughs> well, look up Rashad and Airship from Mercadian Masks. Or Cloud Spirit. There's, that that effect's been printed a lot at common in limited sets, actually. Those cards usually were quite good. But that's because like creatures were awful back then. Bro! All I needed was you, Stefan! You were my lucky charm! I don't know, man. <laughs> we kind of just I... ran them out of the game, both of those games, didn't we? Yeah, we, we kind of made their library a bad card. I think that's, so that's often probably... library is a, like... There's, it's like one third of the games I think library's not great, which is why I don't have it in. I often. think I think library is very good against slow combo decks and um, controlish decks that don't mm -hmm. play Leo Wolf, and that's only exactly it's only like one third of the meta game right now, at least uh, at most actually, because like. It's not that good against DNT. It's not that good against Maverick, really. I mean, it's okay play. It's like not great against Thalia decks. It's not great against fast combo decks. It's not great in Delver Mirrors, unless you're on the play mm -hmm. and have Uro yourself. That's and against Elves, it's kind of kind of interesting. Like I don't hate Library against Elves, but they also like chip damage you a lot, and then. Mm -hmm. You kind of need to trade with every single card if you go to the Library. Like if you if you. Try that route, and then it's awkward as well. Oof. It's really hard to grind elves. Someone in chat asks, "Am I going to play against Mr. Beast for twenty five k today?" Well, oh. when when does that? When is the you know the the time zone? Not the time zone. Like it's in one point five hours from now. Ooh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are gonna log on. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to actually queue into Beast, but. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, yeah, I would take myself over Mr. Play. Beast. Uh, Sendo Osen, why doesn't Rug play Uro anymore? There are, there are versions that do, I just kind of think it's not the quite correct fit. I, I feel like Uro can be good, but the problem is... It, so, you're playing Uro in, in threat slots, but it's not... It's not it's not a threat that ends the game fast. It's like a threat <laughs> that changes your game plan. It's like it's good when Rug loses, basically. Like when you, when you are losing, Uro can like win those games, but it also kind of loses you games that you are already winning sometimes. We're and rich. also, it, it requires you to play more lands. So the main problem with, with uh, Uro and Rug is that it kind of you, you kind of need to restructure your deck and reassess every matchup that you. Basically, new like you basically have to play matchups differently with Uro, and in some meta games or like matchups, it's gonna be good, and some it's not. So it's kind of complicated, I think. Why no, mine are orange. Oh wait, why are yours gray? I, 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 I don't know. I gray ones as well. I don't oh. know why. It says season like two on it, though. So um... it says season two on it for me as well. <laughs> Okay, Z, Z Turchan is making us open chess. I want you to provide commentary on whatever card I open. Okay. So. Gladeheart Cavalry. Wait, this card... It's I from, remember this card from Draft. It's from yeah, Ocentic well, Gate Watch, yeah. The, yeah, I mean, there's not much to say about it. It's not, not a very interesting card. It also cost seven in the format was a little bit yeah. speedier. I mean, when, you, when you when you got to play it, it was quite good, but you didn't get to play that often. And the left card I have when this card got spoiled, I think there was like something was about like some combo or some ADH bullshit. <laughs> like this card, like like in multiplayer you can resolve this, and then like if you have a lot of cards in it, you just win or something. I don't know. It's it's really weird. It's not a very good card, I think. No, it, it never has been good, and I drafted that format a lot, and I never cast or picked it. Like, I picked it, obviously, when it was, like, a last pick or something, but, like, that's, like, not a very playable card in general, I think. Uh, in Ravnica but, Allegiance, the, my favorite deck was Esper Acuity, obviously. Yeah, mine too, actually. That and Mardu Piles. 
Wait, Mardu files and oh yeah, you're right. Yep. Yeah, I, I usually drafted like Rakdos or Orzo splash whatever rares I I opened in pack two or pack three. That's like a deck I played a lot. Love struck beast says awaken the earth is a good way to send a message to a table of players with announced paralysis. You get no choices, only zombies. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, if you hold on to your cards too long, they just become zombies, right? Life is deterministic. We're all gonna become zombies at some point. Yeah. <laughs> just like uh, just like that movie I Am Legend. If you remember that one. Yeah, I remember that one. With that. that one was like. Actually, they were closer to vampires and zombies in that movie, I think. Yeah, that movie was kind of strange. I mean, I, I, I didn't hate it. Like, mm-hmm. it, it was kind of, it was okay. It was okay. Definitely. All right, this, Chad, this is your last chance to get Stefan to make more comments about Treasure Chess. I mean, I don't have very good comments about... A lot well, of we, we had a funny story about... Uh, well, I guess Gladeheart Calvary really doesn't leave much to the imagination, does it? Yeah, that little card kind of sucks. Well, yeah. Oh, I have to check, like, I think Mana Traders, I have to... Um... Yeah, you have three and a half hours. Oh, yeah, I still have a lot of time. That's too much time anyway. They're definitely vampires in the OG Yeah, book. it was a book. Oh, I didn't know that. The, so the oh, book yeah. actually takes place in, like, the 1600s. Oh, so it's like they time shifted it into yeah. zombies and a different timeline for the movie. I didn't know that. Oh no, is this nineteen seventy six? Oh, maybe I'm misremembering. I thought it was. Why do I remember it being something else? I don't know. That's weird. I'm just. Uh, I'm commentating traders tomorrow, so I'm rooting on my buddies, Stefan. But good luck to everyone else in the chat who will be playing it. Oh, yeah, the old Mega Man. Man. Never heard of that movie. Maybe I'll check out that movie later. The Mega Man apparently is the first movie based on it. I never heard about that. Well, it's from 1971, that's why. Oh, actually... I imagine it's the third adaptation of the novel slash book. The last Man on Earth is the first one. Wow, interesting. Yeah, There's no, been a lot it's... of... Quite interesting. Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll root you I, on I could, the... I could, I, could, uh, <laughs> I could stream again, yeah. That's true. I'll root you on uh, Niv Shum, Shumli. Oh, help me. Kaguya says... Carlton Heston is great in Omega Man. Maybe I've never I've never actually seen it, but I might check it out later today if I can find it. Anything else to say about the Delver deck? Um, no, nah, it's perfect. I'm gonna win every tournament I play with this list. Changing, the, <laughs> changing it to a second quote this made the deck perfect. Uh, joking aside, maybe one of these should be a Bone Crusher. It's possible. I don't really know. Well, the thing about borrowers, I think it's really nice to be able to like answer Chalice and shit in game one, right? Or Merit Wage. It's also funny that finally, after countless tries, uh, uh, Daniel finally put Hex Drinker into his Delver deck. <laughs> it's funny he, because he, he put know. four into his Jun Shadow deck, right? Like he, he was so obsessed with it, and but never like every time I talked about it in Delver, he was like. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's you don't really want to spend mana on it, and it's like it colludes with your plan casting or on turn three or on turn three. I was like, yeah, but the thing is, you can also not play Uro, but and also the thing is, or gives you more lands for the hex trigger. So like, it's not really, it's not really a collusion. It's like more like a synergy. And, and then well, like, yeah, yeah. Well, also, like the, the deck just gets better every time. Like th- that's one thing I hated uh, since Nimble Mongoose became so bad. It's like you only have four one mana creatures, so every time you don't have Delver on turn one, you really need a threat on turn two or turn three. Otherwise, your cards get so much worse. Like your forces, your data's, your wastelands. They all bolt sometimes too. They all get worse if you don't have a threat in play. So like even having like the Savannah Lion. 
even though it's just a 2-1 for like a couple attacks, that one soaking removal or like dealing 4-6 damage or like maybe just getting leveled up and winning the game. Just yeah, having more threat yeah. than you can play after one is just... Especially when you don't play a stifle list. Actually, that's why at GP Atlanta, I did play two of these at GP Atlanta, but obviously with run in six, it's a little bit different because you'll always have enough mana to do this, right? Yeah, that's kind of a different synergy. You could like turn one hex, turn turn three, run, turn three, get land, uh, turn three, uh, leveled it, leveled it three times. Opponent had to answer it, and run in six. Yeah. Probably for like the best that Ren is not legal anymore. <laughs> yeah, the card is kind of, I don't know, degenerate gameplay is what I could call it. Because, like, as soon as it's in play, um, lands don't matter. Like, your opponent's lands don't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. And, like, if they have a waste, then you just lose the game <laughs> with a lot of decks. <laughs> so you're kind of forced to play either Delver yourself or combo decks that ignore Ren six or uh, Astrolabe decks. I think that those were the only three good decks, like during Ren era. That was yeah. pretty open. Mm -hmm. though. I'm trying to remember my round one pairing at that GP was against Esper Echo Vions, and I was like kind of terrified, and then I just beat them pretty bad in the oh, first yeah. games. Because that deck, because that, that deck can just random you out of the match pretty qu quickly. There is a there was a person playing that deck a lot on MTGO when Echo mm -hmm. got legal. I don't know who it was. I forgot. But they all they played a lot of that Esper Echo deck, and it never was that good. But no, it it's, definitely it's, have like some really naughty draws. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, nowadays we play Karn Echo decks, I guess. Instead, those are like more resilient and consistent. But I don't think they're necessarily that good right now. No, at least the blue the blue Karn Echo deck. I think got much worse. I, I think if you're gonna play that deck, you should just consider playing Mystic Forge instead. But that also has yeah, like kind of vulnerabilities as well. Yeah, but the deck really only loses to one or two cards. Whereas like the what I saw like with the current Echo deck, uh, the, the blue blue Urza Echo deck, mm -hmm. is like now the Elf matchup is worse. <laughs> you can just like if they get to like play creatures out, like if if you don't have a Narset or a Halberdier. Basically, just losing a felt against elves. Yeah, that's fair. I, I I didn't feel like losing because like I, I never played the deck. I just played the elf side, and it felt like really easy to win against the deck. That's what I'm mean, what I'm saying. Also, Delver is more popular again. Mm -hmm. Delver that is that is built to have like threats against Chalice because everyone is running Boro nowadays. We don't have Oka anymore, but we have a lot of other stuff to answer Chalice. And they're like, if you don't have Chalice against Delver, Delver with the deck, it's so hard to win because like mm -hmm. emery, emery dies to bolt karn can't minus or it dies to bolt so like your only relevant card is like led echo or is a like it depends obviously but if there were creatures in play and you don't have challenge you lose it's not a good spot to be in all right and there's also other matchups so, so like i really don't like that deck anymore i think we've exhausted everything there is to say about this deck for now, obviously yeah, for we now. might come back to it in a week or two. Uh, before we go, first off, is there anything you want to say about? Um, not really. I mean, I'm I'm having to. I have to think about what I'm gonna register. Yes, I, we'll have a discussion about that after this. Obviously, I, I could I could register this deck. You I'm could, not sure, I, but it's very very viable. <laughs> I mean, in the games we played, it felt quite good. Like. I think Daniel did fit, hit most of the numbers where I'd want them to be. Except, yeah. like, his sideboard I didn't like because it's Daniel and he does weird things. At least he's stopped playing Rock of Virginia, it's good lord. <laughs> it's funny I because I think how... Relic is better in this version, but it's, like, still bad in this deck. And he was playing it I don't in. Know how, it, how it happened that he finally got to put Soul Guide Lancer into the deck instead of Relic. I don't know what made him do that. Oh, <laughs> there's a question. Uh, can I explain the 3x force of negation? Uh, well, the thing is, well, uh, you could play six forces. Yeah. The thing is just, um, if you look at the deck, um, Forager is kind of 
very similar to the Red Hood Arcanus. Like you want to tap out with it and then like get free stuff back. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's we also have Hex Trinker in our deck, which can be mana intensive. And we also play Preordain, which makes our deck like Preordain doesn't make your deck faster or anything. It makes it more consistent but clumpier. So like Spell Pierce is like the other card that you can play, or like maybe Counter Spell or something. But those cards all cost mana and they're like very situative. Whereas Force of Negation, it's like it's obviously also situative, but it always costs <laughs> zero. You can always pitch one force to the other. Mm -hmm. So like, I like it more as a seventh piece of stack interaction, or like eleventh piece if you count days uh, of stack interaction than spell pierce or counter spell in this version. It, like well, spells in fact, if I didn't play the third fawn, as Daniel actually had it in the sideboard, and I just looked at the deck, and I'm like, I'm just cutting a card for the third fawn main. The other thing you could do is play an, a sixth real spell. In fact, Daniel had a second forked bolt, and I just thought two forked yeah. bolt was kind of yeah, excessive. The, the original list had a second forked bolt and only two fawns, but yeah. the third fawn in the sideboard anyway. So the thing is, like, you're going to play some anti combo card somewhere in the 75 anyway, and you can choose to play it main or sideboard. Like yep. you're gonna, it can also be a fluster storm or a whale, but those cards are like way more situative. And if you choose to play one of the main, it's probably gonna be force of negation or spell pierce. And spell pierce, I don't like as much right now. I don't either. But it is also very like playable in a sense. Well, the the card I was actually looking at again is spell snare. I think it might be a yeah. point where spell snare is like reasonable there's again. Combo, so there's a lot of CMC two targets now. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's but, what I was looking at again. But, yeah. JPA was playing Spell Snare. Yeah, I mean, that card is also viable. Snare, Snare, Spell Beers. You can play a different card in that slot, definitely. But, Ooh, Luxor has I, a good I, question. How does this deck match up against Leylines, the de facto tier 1 deck? Are we talking, like, Leyline of Awesome? You know, like, the, 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 the Leyline... Um, Sarah of Sanctum. Awesome. Opalescence, yeah. probably. Okay, well, if they don't have the black ley line, then most of the ley lines don't matter. The white one can be uh, annoying sometimes. You have Brazen Bora nowadays. Before that, you didn't really have answers to enchantments. I don't know, it's probably really good. <laughs> you have forces here, Brazen Bora. I, I think, yeah. Remember when we had Force of Vigor sideboard? That would literally be the best card possible in that sort of matchup. This version just doesn't have enough green cards for that. Yeah, exactly. I looked at it again. Euro inclusion. Yeah. Euro library-ish decks can play that. Alright, I think uh, now is the final part of the stream where I will e-select where, where we're heading. Where the people are heading to. Okay, that shouldn't be too hard. Um... Spike is playing this deck that I lost to in a prelim. I lost to Theo playing this deck as Niv, and it seemed so impossible yeah, to win. Yeah, let's see if someone else is... But let's scroll a bit down, but maybe it's just Spike. Because I don't want to host Karina streamers necessarily, because that's not what people are wanting to see. Oh, this guy named Jarvis U. I would, <laughs> <laughs> I would host him. Uh... There is... Uh, okay, well... Nah, I think. I thought I saw one other good. legacy person. Maybe there is some. We, we, we don't, we're not in a hurry or anything. <laughs> Mr. Oh. Beast in 50k event. <laughs> People are really trying to uh, clout That's chase the... with those titles, huh? Yeah. 